This story begins with a request for help. The girl who was sitting with her hands tied and bleeding asked for help, calling Alto to her. There was a burning house behind her and in front of the young man who called to the girl. The guy who was not far from her tried to run to her, but he realized that his body was motionless and that he could not move. Trying to move himself, he asked someone to help him, because turning to Hannah, he understood that they could not lose. At that moment, someone above them said that it was already useless. It seems that the young man could not even scream and all this was because of life. Life is an immutable law of fortune, such is the will of God. The hero had to delve into it, because he was born with too weak a life and therefore can only watch in silence without doing anything. At that moment, someone who was talking to our hero was going to attack the girl so that she was right in front of him. The young man, looking at this whole situation, asked himself that this someone stop and he also begged himself to stop when this someone started attacking Hannah, who also could not move. The next moment Hannah was startled, and our hero screamed with tears in his eyes, looking at it. Fifteen years ago, a young man lost his beloved. He was looking for a way to revive Hannah by reading a lot of books. He seriously scoured the world to find a way to revive her. There were rumors that it was necessary to challenge the dragon in the dungeon. But the young man challenging the dragon did not know that the dragon was level 99 and yet he was looking for ways he could find it if he didn't turn 55. Being already old and standing in front of his opponent, our hero thought that victory was really impossible. Even at level 99 with his experience, how he was able to defeat the dragon. But now he will not return, he thought to himself, at least to his loved ones, the hero thought, bleeding and remembering Hannah, thinking that she would believe him, because he tried, but still remained alone. At this moment, when his strength left him, with tears in his eyes, he remembered Hannah, because there was not a moment when he did not think about her, remembering the happy moments that connected them and he apologized that he could not give her anything. Lying in front of the altar on which there was medicine, he thought that he could try and try again. In another place there was beautiful weather and a chair that stood under a tree, on which there was something and addressed our hero, spoke of words of gratitude, asking about how his life went, because the hero was in the paradise of fortune, and the young man, looking at the creature in front of him, understood that it turned out that he died. The creature explained that the person who got here was worthy of the tears of God. Enough time passed and thought about what it was about him. A certain vessel revolved around our hero. The young man tried to understand what it was, where it was before him. The creature that was sitting on the chair said that the young man was granted the magic of resurrection. He could live his life anew. Hearing about the fact that he could live his life anew, the young man was very surprised the next moment the creature said that he could send him on vacation, if you can call it that. There was a beautiful field behind the creature from flowers and meadows, because it seemed to the creature that the soul of the young man was already worn out. Our hero interrupted the creature and said that it was not so, he wanted to live his life again. The hero answered, clearly and loudly in front of the creature, if so, the creature answered, then he will change the fate of the young man. But there is one condition, the term of twenty years and there is only one chance. The power of fate is incredibly powerful and his life runs out before he gets over it and asked, this being, if the young man still wanted to start from the beginning. Our hero, remembering his Hannah, thought that of course he wanted this, the young man wanted to save the girl. And then the creature said that it was fine, so he offered to hear the young man's desire. The next moment it moved into our hero and then said that everything starts over, he will remember the rest himself. No there is no other choice but to endure making efforts to fulfill the desire and offer to challenge his fate. So, our hero, opening his eyes and looking at the two people who were in front of him, again found himself in the body of a baby. His parents were in front of him, so his second life began. Then someone called him, addressing Alto, and it was his parents who were happy to welcome their baby and asked him to wake up, wishing the boy good morning and saying that it was nice outside and the sun was shining, so you could go for a walk. Looking at your parents, Alto understood that he was back a baby. Then, stretching out his hands to his parents, he said yes, and the parents in love looked at their son, wanting to hug him to which the father pulled his hands to the child, and the mother, taking him in her arms, said that they had decided with the father that she would wake the baby. Then the father said that he would put to bed and a happy mom she said that she really wanted to hug her son, she was overwhelmed with feelings, calling the young boy a cutie. He only uttered inarticulate sounds, and thought to himself that everything was fine. He could not say a word to her. The neck was not fully developed yet. Looking at his mother, the son thought that she had long hair when he was born, and dad apparently had not grown a beard yet and thought that it was wonderful, because he was reborn. The next moment the parents approached their son to the window and he was looking at the street thinking about that new life, 
and this time there was not a second to lose. Lying in his crib, our hero thought that he could not even suspect that the baby's body was so uncomfortable, so underdeveloped. First of all he would like to walk, the boy thought, lying in his cradle. At that moment his mother was cutting food next to him and humming something to herself. The next moment, our hero was thinking to himself that at least he could turn over and that a window of the system appeared in front of him. When the boy pulled his hand to the side of the crib, but did not understand at all what it was in front of him. The system window displayed the first level and the data of our hero. His name is Alto. His first life, his profession is an operator and his talent is a creator. Then mom came up to her son, asked what he had there. Then our hero pointed to the screen and said non-articulate sounds. The girl did not notice what our hero was pointing at and thought that she probably needed to change diapers. Then the baby guessed that it looked like mom did not see this window. At this moment the system screen showed muscle strength. One, physical strength. One. Our hero thought that maybe these are the statuses of abilities. He could assess the standard of living. In the church he had never heard that it is possible to translate ability into numerical equivalent. Maybe then everything happened and remembering his meeting with a certain being in paradise, Alto said that he would allow him to choose his special teju when hearing this. The young man asked the creature again, to which he said that it was given to people with a natural gift. Geniuses, wars, magicians, technicians or creators, it seems the young man was a genius whether he wanted to leave it. Something asked him, to which the young man replied that he did not want the past, because he wanted to be a creator. There are only five natural gifts in the world, but he had never heard of the gift of the creator, he had to see what he could do. Then clicking on the system window, the baby saw that the gift of the creator was unique and he saw the whole situation. If he could learn everything, he would raise the level and thought that it was great. But then I saw that while she had the worst rating equal to one, so I'll have to try. But he doesn't have time for it, our hero thought and tried to get out of his cradle. Looking at this, my mother told my father to look carefully, because Alto was trying to get up and then my father said that he had never seen babies do this, the boy had to grow up a little. Our hero thought to himself that he didn't have time at all, because there were 15 years left before Hannah's death. During this time he had to become stronger than the magician who attacked her. There was not a second to lose, besides, in his previous life he lost not only Hannah. Looking at his mother and father, our hero thought. Mom, looking at her son, asked what happened to Alto because his face was very sad. At that moment our hero hugged his mother and thought that eight years later he lost his father and mother remembering how they died. It happened at night when Alto was eight years old. Suddenly a horde of goblins appeared. For the first time monsters attacked the village. The father defended his son and mother, shouting at the goblins to leave them alone. Our hero, looking at all this, thought that he was enveloped in fright and with tears in his eyes he saw how his father was fighting goblins and he only had a fear of death. At that moment his mother was running away with him in her arms and then he just clung to his mother, trying to scream he followed his father, but it was too late. The next moment, the mother running away told Alto that everything was fine, because mom would help him. But at that moment they were attacked by goblins and the mother shouted that she would save her son. Then throwing the young man away, the goblins took her away and the mother shouted for her son to run, because she would cope with them. The young man scared, all I could do was just clench my teeth and run away with tears in my eyes. The mother apologized to her son, because she loved him so much, while our hero was running away in tears from his parents. He couldn't do anything, so he just ran away. But this time in his second life he will save mom and dad. It's time to become stronger, our hero thought, sitting next to his parents in the cradle. Later, Alto grew up and began to read books and his intellectual strength status began to grow. Then the mother, taking the book away, told the young man to give it away, and he did not understand why he had to give the book. The next moment the father, who thought that his lantern was not lit, tried to go look for his son. At this moment the moment his lantern lit up, the status window said that the young man's magic power was at level 3, passivity, working with magic power, a new restoration of magic power. When he grew up, he already began to jump very fast and run. While the other guys were just watching him, his agility status and evasion skill level rose. So it was every time our hero could do something new, the next moment eight years flew by in an instant. The young man sat near the tree and used the gift and skill, which also increased. When mom came home, she told Alto that she congratulated him on his eighth birthday. She was very happy and hugged her son to which he understood that his mother would crush him if she hugged him so much. His father said that the handsome guy was all in him, and that they would immediately begin training the young man and his mother said that it was a good idea. Mom congratulated her son, because in the evening he goes to church, to which our hero agreed. Everyone who turns 8 years old is given special bracelets. This is a kind of identity card and our hero also turned 8, 
The priest said and asked to stretch out his hands to Alto, to which the young man standing in the church stretched out his hand and the priest gave a magic bracelet proving the identity of the young man. It is better to go to the big city with him, he said and asked be careful not to lose it. Having received our bracelet, the hero thought that at last, and that the goblins would arrive in the village in a few hours. He was already crying. He had to bring himself to his senses. Alto thought, the time had come, remembering his past self, our hero thought, because he would save this village. Leaving the church and coming to the forest, the young man wanted to open the skill board to see how much he had advanced. This was his status. The young man thought that it was probably necessary to reach 15 levels. It was necessary to increase the power, and magic was 32 levels in total, and Alto already knew how to use all the skills accumulated over 8 years. The only skill he didn't understand was the ability to create various functional objects, and our hero thought to himself that he hadn't activated this ability before, because he didn't have this skill and then he thought that it wouldn't hurt in battle, so he decided to activate this skill. This time the moment he realized that the goblins were already here. The goblins were already in the forest and our hero, noticing them, hid behind a tree, thinking that they had come and there were three goblins in total. Most likely they were scouts, our hero thought that he had to be calm. In the past he had defeated many monsters. Then the goblins noticed our hero, who was sticking right out from behind a tree, and ran straight to him. The young man thought that now would be the first fight in his second life. It was time to show what he had learned and therefore concentrating magic. He thought that he trained every day and would not regret. This time he was the only one who could save the village. So our hero launched an attack on goblins using flames. Having killed one goblin, the young man thought that he had succeeded and that it was not bad. But not enough, the next moment he was fighting another goblin, while another attacked him from behind and dodging him. Our hero understood that he should not have made mistakes. So after killing all three goblins, he thought about that it was necessary to strengthen the attacks and lucky that I didn't meet any monsters yet. At the moment when our hero dealt with the goblins, the system showed that the level was raised. Our hero thought that it was cool, he was able to defeat them and also increase the level, raising the level, and the young man was already drunk, thinking that his head was spinning, but then he, he saw a goblin running at him with a sword. The goblin was able to injure the young man. Then our hero thought that was it really a new wave of goblins. Dealing with the next one, he saw that there was a whole horde behind him and he was caught off guard. There were a lot of goblins, but without the arm that was wounded, he would not be able to fight and thought about that nothing has changed at this time. No matter how he struggles, he will not be able to change his fate, our hero thought, remembering his beloved. Then the young man thought that he would not give up and using magic he thought that he should have tried harder. At that moment the magic power reached level 50 and the skills that were obtained. Grave Reaper. When the young man saw the system window where the level increase was written, he thought that he had acquired the crafting skill, and the magic power would appear when the level increased. That's why he couldn't use it, our hero thought. At that moment there was a horde of goblins behind him, our hero thought to himself, did they want to attack at him, because they saw only his weaknesses, but not his fighting skills, and what would they do to him, our hero thought. The next moment, one of the goblins began to attack the young man. Dodging his sword, he thought that it was close to being wounded and using his magic, or rather a fireball. Our hero attacked the goblins and realized that it was harder with a cut hand, and this nastiness only became more. This time the moment a large number of goblins attacked our hero and he thought this time there were eight. With such strength he would be able to fight them off, so the young man tried to believe in his strength. Grave Grave skill was used the next moment using magic, and then he was able to deal with the goblins who were falling right into the gorge. Realizing that Alto had done it, did the young man think that he could? It was a grave, it was a crafting skill, looking at his hands. Our hero thought and rejoiced that he did this, remembering his fate and thought that it would change, because Alto saved the village. At that moment the system showed him a level increase and it was a lot of increases, probably because he defeated the goblins, our hero thought. Once the level has risen, it means he has heard that if there is an opportunity to go a step higher, then the level increases. This is an increasing pain, the young man thought, losing consciousness. Then I opened my eyes, the young man realized that he was cold and something was flying around his face, he thought. At that moment he saw a certain creature, and looking at him jumping away. He thought what it was, there was some beautiful slime in front of him and then the slime showed him its head. The young man saw some kind of liquid and asked if he had to drink into it. Drinking what was in the slime's head, Alto thought about how good it was for him. The slime was jumping in front of him at that moment and then our hero thought about what it was, looking at the slime that was right in front of him. 
looking at this something. The young man thought that the slime was not like a dangerous monster and that she was friendly enough. At that moment the slime jumped right to our hero and climbed to his face, to which he did not understand what she wanted and that touching the slime was very ticklish. The next moment our hero was already looking at the village where he was born, sitting on a mountain and thinking that a pretty, small place surrounded by nature. At this moment the slime also looked ahead and showed something. But our hero said that he would not return here. There is a person he should there was a way to save. But he was still weak and it was possible that it was all useless. About a mile from here there is the city of Kinetogris, one of the best underground cities. The goal is to capture the upper floors, raise the level there as much as possible. Our hero thought. Then the guy remembered his beloved and thought about how he could level up, remember what the city looked like and what obstacles and battles were waiting for him, because only seven years remained until that day. The young man thought. At that moment the slime was crawling over our hero, and then getting up. He thought that he was apologizing to father and mother and asked to apologize for his sudden departure. The young man wrote a letter where he said that he had a list of tasks that, no matter what, he had to complete. The young man thought that this was the end, but it was necessary to fix everything and so really needed and thanked his parents for surrounding him with love. He was glad that he grew up with them, remembering his father and mother. Eight years have passed and he was happy. The young man fought with tears in his eyes and that then it was necessary to go on the road. After leaving his parents' house, the slime followed him and our hero could not understand if she was watching him because it was dangerous and said that she would go alone. It was difficult to defend herself from monsters, but then the slime began to applaud her limbs. The young man thought that since she was so worried, she could stay close to him, agreeing with the slime. Time passed and one month later, our hero fought with a wolf that was strong enough and after defeating him, he thought that he needed to have lunch. At that moment the slime was next to him and dragged something on himself and realized that these were wounds from a new wolf. The young man thought and thanked the slime. At that moment she put one from magic stones directly into our hero's bag and having magic stones, there was no need to worry about expenses, he thought. Then the slime put the stone at ran and shouted something on its own. The young man saw where to move the slime thought that he had really found them a bed for the night. The next moment the young man looked out from behind the mountain, and the slime was sitting on it and looking at the night the young man thought that it was just right. It was a cave and he thought that today he would rest here, because he had to go to Kinetogris tomorrow. After roasting a barbecue on the fire, he thought that there was a low-rank monster here and it was easy to find food even without a fight to which he was used. Finally his body began to look like itself in a previous life, fast-growing and unsurpassed. The next moment, a system window appeared in front of our hero, showing his level 32 and his characteristics, which increased each time. The young man was thinking that it was possible to raise the level more effectively while in the dungeon in order to become stronger. At that moment our hero was sitting on a stone and holding another stone in his hand, and while eating a kebab, he saw that the slime that had climbed to him was also starting to eat a kebab. Looking at the slime that was on his hands, the young man asked him to try to eat rice and asked if he would really eat everything. Smiling, our hero looked at her and thought about finding something that inspires and collecting magic stones. He was very glad that he met the slime. Then our hero asked, was he really a predator? And it was a small shock for the young man. At that moment someone was watching the hero from behind the mountain. When our hero felt that someone was watching him, he threw a stick from the barbecue directly towards the mountain, where someone was hiding and then he thought that someone was quickly dodging. The next moment the young man realized that it was moving so fast that he could not keep track of it. And then what was moving fast hurt our hero and he thought that if a bunch of attacks hit at such a speed, he would not survive. Looking in front of him, the young man saw a demon, not a man, a thief who came for magic stones, he thought. At that moment this someone fell right in front of our hero, and then taking the kebabs in his hands, which were our heroes, a girl in the guise of a half-human half-animal stood in front of him. Looking at her our hero completely I didn't expect this. The young man saw in front of him a girl who was eating his barbecue and asked if she was a monster, to which the girl replied that she was a magica and a traveler and asked the young man who he was, to which our hero introduced himself saying that his name was Alto. The young man thought to himself that she was not like at the monster and that the girl looked friendly. The girl looked at him. The guy said that she had very cute ears and then she reported that she was from the squirrel tribe. Had the young man heard about this? But then she said that she didn't care. Our hero just looked at her questioningly and the next moment the girl was already disappearing from the his field of vision was next to the campfire where our hero's food was fried. The next moment she asked if the young man did not mind if she finished it, 
to which our hero did not understand why she was doing this and where she was. He never heard please. At that moment the slime was trying to get the shish kebab from the girl's hands, which she took. The next moment in the morning, when our hero woke up, the girl was following him and the slime was already sitting on her shoulder. Then our hero asked why the girl was following him, to which she told Alto that he was still a child. She needed to go to the cinema, so she follows him, to which our hero asked Magiku if she herself was still a child. The girl said that if you look like an adult, you still remain a child, to which our hero was asked to think that he was already an adult even though he was going to go alone. But then it suddenly dawned on him and turning to Magica, Alto said that time would pass faster and it was necessary to go. I smile at the girl, the young man said, to which she agreed. The next moment, the young man was pointing in front of him, saying that he had seen him and it was a kinetogress. The landscape of the city appeared in front of the guys, behind a large wall, and approaching the city. Passing through the gate they were greeted by residents. First a girl came across who said that there was everything for them. Low taxes and no criminal record and offered they pass into the city. Since ancient times, kinetogris means chaos. A wide variety of races. It's all about the dungeon towering in the center. People, fascinated by the dungeon, one by one gather in this city. At that moment, as the heroes entered the city, Magica was very scared. The young man asked what happened, to which she said that she was going through and seeing so many people for the first time. Turning to Magica, the young man said that he himself was from the village, and to which the girl replied that she lived on the street. The young man said that he was nervous when he arrived for the first time, to which Magica was very surprised and told Alto that he had previously said that he had not been here. To which Alto said that he was here with his parents and then remembered that he was like 10 years old and felt that the city was alive. Almost nothing has changed. Looking around, our hero thought. Alto thought to himself, I wonder if something will happen in the next two years, because we had to be careful, and then the girl asked where he was going now. Our hero said that he needed to go to the Adventurer's Guild, needed money to live here and asked if Magica was going with him to which the girl said that she would certainly go with him. Coming to the guild, the young man said that he wanted to exchange magic stones, to which I turned to him. The man said that the guy was at the wrong address. Our hero was very surprised and then the man standing behind the counter said that the guy should leave, because this place was not for children. Then our hero took his bag and shook it out on the table where all the stones he only had. And the man who had previously wanted to drive him away was very surprised that the young man showed and asked where he had so many stones from. Our hero said that he got them on the hunt. Alto defeated this girl who was standing next to him, but does not know how to sell magic stones. Pointing to Magica, Alto said, to which the man looked at the girl in surprise and she wanted to say that she had nothing. Our hero asked her shut up. Then, smiling, the guy realized that it came out around 1990, telling our hero 2 gold 29 silver and 85 copper to which the young man thought there were only 1990 pieces, and he was already so exhausted. It was because he was a child or it was about growth. Putting money in his bag the young man thought and asked, could he have registered as a finder? The man asked the young man why the child was registering as an adventurer, to which the young man pointed to the girl and said that she was an adult and by the way, he needed to register because he had a big deal. At that moment Magica wanted to say something again. But our hero closed her mouth and asked the man to hurry up because they didn't have time. When leaving the Magica Guild, she turned to Alto and told the young man to take her with him to use, asking him what our hero apologized to her, explaining that he did not want to. But at his age it is difficult to explain all this, so he just asked for help. And he asked Magica if it wasn't smart to spend time buying magic stones, to which she said that it didn't improve his reputation. Turning to Alto, going after him, hearing about reputation, the young man said that he didn't care, no one gets stronger from increasing reputation. He said, and looking at as a young man, Magica was very surprised by his words. Our hero walked ahead of her and said that now that there was money, it was necessary to find a hotel and thank the girl for helping. They could eat together. But if the girl had some business, they could say goodbye here. After hearing this she said that they could go, but not for nothing, either money or they spend time in his room. And after hearing this, the young man said that the girl should follow him, while what she was, our hero thought to himself. Evening came, and the young man said that he was very glad that the girl went with him. He thought that she would refuse at first and sitting in the room they talked. To which our hero said that because he looked like a waif for him, many roads were closed in this hotel delicious food. Our hero said and thought that the girl would also like it. While they were sitting in their room and our hero was explaining something, 
Magica looked at him point blank and the young man did not understand what it was and the girl said that there was nothing like that and she would go take a bath. Hearing this our hero saw the girl taking off her cloak and asked her to undress in the bathroom and not in front of him. At that moment the slime was very glad and slept on my bed. Magica thought that she was tired, standing in the bathroom, putting on clothes, because this was the first time with her, and when she got out of the shower, she thought that she would go to bed, and tomorrow morning she would eat her fill. At that moment she saw our young man practicing magic exercises and realized that there was mana in front of her. A person was incapable of such a thing. Then looking at the young man who was sitting on the bed with his eyes closed, she thought about who this alto was. Traveling around the world, Magica explored it up and down, all in order to find someone. But a few days ago some guy was lucky to tag along with her, the girl thought, and watching him. She saw that the young man was strong beyond his years, had skills that she had not yet seen to she had to get closer to check on him. It looked like he had some secret. Magica remembered everything that our hero said and she was surprised that he spoke and behaved like an adult. Could it be that he was the one she was looking for, the one who could change this world? But, according to the star prediction, the hero will come to this world in the body of a girl, and she thought that it was impossible for Alto to be this hero, looking at the young man she thought. Magica also thought that she had a feeling that the young man would become the key to opening the doors of a new world. This feeling that she experienced. The next moment our hero was already asleep, tired after his classes, and the girl, Looking at him, thought that when the mana disappeared, the young man collapsed like a dead man. Why is he so exhausting himself with training? The girl asked questions. One might think that someone was chasing him. Sitting on the roof of the house, someone was watching them, then tried to climb into the window that opened. And Magica was very surprised, thinking that who was there and was it really a thief? His presence was almost not felt. He must have had a very low level. She could drive him away. But she I wanted to see how he would cope in such a situation. So Magica lay and pretended to be asleep. At this moment the thief who made his way into their room was reaching out to our hero. And stretching out his hands to the back. Our hero woke up and wished a good evening to the one who was right in front of him. So pulling out a knife, he tried to attack our hero. The girl jumped up from her bed, shouted to Alto to be careful. At that moment the knife froze right at the throat of the young man and the thief said to the guy didn't move. The next moment, the thief told the young man that he would behave like an adult and he would not touch him then. Magica asked what the thief wanted and our hero too. Did he really want money and how did he know that they were in his bag? The young man asked, which the thief could not do anything to say and the young man offered to talk to him, attacking the thief, because that thief was none of him and used an air cannon, attacking the one who came to attack them and this someone fell out of the window from the blow of our hero. Magica, looking at the young man, asked Alto if everything was fine, to which our hero said that everything was in perfect order. The girl watching where the enemy fell thought that it was incredibly complex magic that our hero used in one awkward movement. It could easily kill a person. How many the same young man trained to reach such a level at his age? Magica thought, looking at the boy. The next moment she turned to Alto and asked him. But the young man was already sleeping soundly again and the girl was thinking that this boy would definitely become famous in many senses. Looking at the thief's knife, which was lying near the young man's bed, waking up and going down to the tavern, the guys began to eat. They were brought different dishes and our hero asked if it was delicious here and whether Magica liked it. The girl eating everything in front of her said that it was the most delicious thing she tasted, distorting the words, because her mouth was full of food and the hero said, so that she eats and does not hurry. The next moment, the guys thanked for the treat and Magica thanked our hero, saying that she was full to the brim and they left the hotel and then the young man promising to Magica said that in the morning she ate for 10, then Magica asked what happened next. The young man said that, to tell the truth, he planned to go to the dungeon, but an uninvited guest came yesterday, so he wanted to look somewhere else, holding in his hand a knife that was left from the thief. And then our hero went to the guild, coming and greeting those who were sitting right in front of him again. Two men were looking at him, one of whom was the one who was selling money to our hero, and when he saw the boy, he asked if it was really yesterday's kid, to which the young man asked if they were studying magic stones today. The man said that he was talking to the boss and if there was a case for him. He asked the young man to come later, to which our hero said that how well everything coincided. He would also like to discuss something with their superiors and whether it could be that there was a thief in the guild, our hero said. Then the boss, looking at our hero, asked what the young man was talking about and asked to tell him more, to which the young man said that some suspicious type had entered their room yesterday, 
but fortunately they managed to scare him off. But his goal was the money earned from the magic stone sold to the guild. The criminal did not rummage through the room. He knew exactly where they were lying, otherwise he would not have guessed to look for them in a child's bag. In other words, the robber can only be the one who was in the guild when making the transaction. When he finished speaking, our hero looked at his superiors and then the boss said that the probability was really high, then turning to Lyon, who was sitting right in front of him, to which the boss said that he was responsible then and asked if there was anyone suspicious, to which Lyon replied that he didn't even know it. Maybe it was, or maybe it wasn't, the boss asked to speak more clearly, our hero only silently watched this situation. Then Lyon reported that there was no one suspicious. The young man, pointing to Magica, said that she, by the way, managed to brand the criminal when she dealt with him. The girl was very surprised by what the young man was saying and then our hero reported that if the boss noticed a man with a magic sign on his hand, they asked him to detain him. At that moment Lyon lowered his sleeves. At this moment, giving the dagger to the boss, our hero said that the thief had also dropped the dagger. It seemed like a good dagger, but it would be better to hand it over to the gendarmes as evidence. True, he will help them in the search for the thief, the chief said, looking at the dagger in front of him. The next moment, Lyon jumped up and asked the boss if the young man could keep this dagger for himself, because there are rules by which you can take away the things of a defeated opponent. Wasn't it so? It was a pity to give such a good dagger. The boss agreed with Lion, but then there was, but, before he could finish, Lion was already approaching our hero and giving him the dagger, saying that it was great and asking him to take care of this dagger. Because it was, that is, it was probably very expensive and our hero was pushing the guy away from him was dissatisfied with what was happening. And then the boss asked that the transactions take place calmly. It was necessary to strengthen the security and Lion said that he understood everything and asked to rely on him. Then our heroes left and Magica said that that person was a thief, was it worth it to leave it like that? To which our hero said that they were already there warned. The rest is not their concern. To which the girl said, was his real goal really to get a weapon and our hero, looking at Magica, did not understand, did she see through him and thought that since they were done with it. The adventures begin, standing in front of the entrance to the dungeon, our hero spoke, looking at the top, from this very dungeon and Magica, too, looking up said she didn't see the top. Alto explained about the labyrinth of Kinetogris, because this is one of the greatest dungeons in the world, and no one knows how vast it was and who built it and how, so when they entered the portal, they found themselves in another place. The young man explained that there is a lower level from the 1st to the 25th floor. You can walk through it relatively calmly, then mostly novice adventurers train. While our hero was telling here, someone's mooing attracted his attention. The next moment, two guys who were standing not far from him said that this monster had escaped from the top floor and shouting to the guy that his magic was not enough. So the young man had to run and then a giant rat with a horn on its head ran straight at our hero. Everyone saw him, said that there was a child, he needed to run faster. Alto, looking at the enemy in front of him, pronounced the word grave. The next moment the animal fell right into a big hole in the floor, and the young man thought that their affairs were bad. He would not have calculated the strength if the strength. Then he would have overdone it and could have hurt the others, to which Magica, looking down, was surprised how and all the others who didn't understand where that huge hole in the floor came from. Some thought it was an earthquake, but there was no shaking. The young man said that suddenly the floor collapsed as if for evil, the hole was deep enough, so he shouted to everyone to be careful, and they ran away. Magica said that why didn't he say that it was his doing? Then our hero reported that they wouldn't believe him anyway. It was better to run faster to the upper floors. From the 26th floor there was an average level. They say a real maze begins from here. The next moment Magica was dealing with a bear. And the young man said that it was cool and that she defeated the bear with one blow. Magica, sitting next to the carcass, said that nothing special because Alto also fought. The young man, taking out the blade from his belt, thought that it was worth testing it. At that moment the system reported an increase in skill. Dexterity was plus 10. The young man was very glad that the skill was increased, because he could not imagine that this dagger was so effective. If there was a skill board, he would immediately be able to see progress, and not feel it, and that the knife would definitely come in handy when selecting equipment. Even with such a good weapon, you can't stop and you had to become stronger by dealing with the bears in front of them, our hero thought. At the middle level, the monsters were also not particularly strong, so when leaving, it was better to look for more serious monsters. The upper level was next in line, our hero reported, and they left from the middle level, having dealt with opponents. Magica was just looking at the bears, who were killed by our hero. 
Our hero made his way into the cave and a fight began there. The next moment he was fighting demons who were coming straight at him and using a rockfall. Alto decided that he could fight off these demons. Then the demons fell under the stones that our hero could use. Looking at this he exhaled with relief. The guys were on the 50th floor. The upper level starts from here. The young man said, addressing Magicka, and that this was a high risk zone where only a small part of high level adventurers are able to fight. With each next floor, the strength of the monsters will increase. So first you had to go up to the level here, our hero said, looking ahead of him. Magicka only looked at Alto, and then, turning to him, asked why the young man fights in the usual way with monsters. Hearing this our hero was very surprised. Was there really an unusual way? And if the girl knew a good method? Then Alto asked to teach her. Our hero looked at Magicka with sparkling eyes, to which she replied that she did not want to say that but that the monsters that the young man had just defeated were strong enough to cause problems even to high-level adventurers. Magicka doesn't like that the boy flunked several of them at once and she couldn't get it out of her head. How did it happen that the young man was so strong? Standing in front of our hero, the girl asked. Then the young man decided to ask if she thought it looked strange and Magicka said that of course it was so from the outside and asked why our hero was so surprised. The next moment, the young man realized that she was already the second person who could see his real self, before that no one recognized him except Hannah. In his previous life, even when Alto reached level 99, he had to fight monsters alone, while high-level adventurers gathered followers. No one even looked in his direction. Because his life was low, the young man recalled what happened to him and that this was the law of this world. It turns out that there are people who, apart from Hannah, did not obey this law. The young man thought to himself. At that moment Magicka was interested in whether the young man in front of her was exactly human. But our hero, smiling, replied that he was 100% exactly human, thought to himself that, although difficult it was hard to believe, because he died and was reborn. Magicka, having looked at the young man, repeated his words and asked what he was so happy about, generally looking at the smiling alto. Magicka also decided to stop at the version that the young man was just a weirdo. After hearing this, the hero was very indignant why she wanted to call him. So the next moment the system informed the hero that his level was raised and then they moved further along the cave. Our hero reported that now he could defeat monsters from the 50th floor and offered the girl to climb up a little more. Our hero thought to himself that if his memory from his past life did not fail him, there would be a dangerous monster here. And at that moment a small ogre appeared in front of them. In a previous life, he had to sweat a lot to bring down this ogre, our hero thought. And he was wondering how quickly he could do it now. While they stood in front of the ogre and our hero was thinking, Magicka said that this ogre was impatient to kill. He had a completely different level compared to the monsters they had met before, she said. And turning to Alto, the girl reported that she would come to him from the rear. Our hero said that this was not he will, because he will fight alone with this monster. Hearing this, Magicka thought that the young man was not himself, because one mistake and the young man was a dead man. Our hero replied that he knew everything but it was a chance to check how strong he really was. Pulling out his knife and standing up against the ogre, our hero said. The next moment he was already attacking and attacking the ogre with his sword and realized that the skin of this monster was thick, as if made of metal. But our hero was still able to injure him. From this the ogre was beside himself with anger and attacked a young man, injuring him on the cheek. The next moment, dodging the blow, the young man thought that this did not mean that there was no effect from the attack. If he continued to dodge and hit the same place, which our hero had been doing all this time, then he would be able to defeat the ogre. But landing after another attack, Magicka said that it couldn't just be. But I thought to myself that the young man really defeated this monster so easily. Our hero, drying up, thought to himself that he thought he wouldn't have to strain himself too much. Maybe he was the limit of his current strength. The next moment the slime was carrying him a big diamond and when he saw this, a young man asked if a monster of this rank and stones were much bigger, he was wondering, already it was time. At that moment he called Magicka and asked if she had heard him. And the girl just stood behind the young man and asked what kind of sound they heard, to which our hero, realizing what it was, turning to Magicka, said that they had to run away quickly from here. To which the girl said that it was impossible, because if they moved, then they will die. At this moment a huge ogre was reaching out to them though right out of the bowels of the cave. The green org is a monster wrapped in magical ivy. The ivy itself is a low-level monster. It parasitizes other creatures of a higher level, 
and sucks out power. And then our hero, looking at the ogre right in front of him, thought about what the monster of the 70th floor does at 50. Ordinary ogres even then begin to appear 10 floors above. Alto was not even completely sure of the victory over the small one. The young man thought, and there was a big ogre in front of him. The next moment, our hero, addressing Magica, said that it was necessary to catch the moment and run. Putting the slime in the bag and looking at the girl, he thought. But Magica said that it was impossible. She knew that this monster was strong, but that he also had a limit. So activating her gloves she, she was ready to go into battle, because she trained hard to become a worthy partner. The hero she was looking for, she had no equal. But when she met the young man, she finally realized that these efforts were not enough. The next moment, the girl rushed at the ogre and thought that it was her duty to win after all and began to attack the monster. After her attack, Magica looked at the ogre in front of her and realized that there was almost no effect. He only got more angry and started attacking the girl, dodging and running away from the ogre. Magica thought that she was faster than him. The damage from one attack is clearly not enough, so she should have spent several at once. The girl thought to herself, constantly attacking the ogre faster. The next moment, beating her with ivy, she realized that he grabbed her and that squeezing her body was very painful for her. At that moment I used an air blade. Our hero was able to free the girl and the ivy fell behind her, to which our hero asked how Magica felt and the girl thanked him, thinking about how pathetic she was because she had just been saved by a child. The next moment she was looking at the ogre and activating her power again. She realized that it was time to give her all. So using the light as an untouched shadow, she asked to grant her the power of the radiance of 1000 heavenly bodies. Artifact Star Rain used Magicka against the ogre, attacking him with all his strength. The next moment the girl realized that she had used up all the mana for her secret spell. Now she thought the ogre should have died. But the next moment the dust dispersed and she saw that the ogre was unharmed and did not understand at all how it could be. At that moment the ogre was lifting his leg right over Magica. Looking at the ogre, Magica thought that even though she put all her strength into her blow, but it wasn't enough. The next moment the ogre fell into the ground, right under him. Our hero tried to save the girl and seeing Alto in front of him, who took her in his arms and ran away with her, said that she had to leave the rest to him and I turned to Rue, to my slime. To look after Magica, the slime agreed and our hero went back into battle. Standing in front of the ogre, the young man understood that he had to win. The next moment he rushed straight into the attack and he was no faster than Magicka. But since this was the case, he thought. At that moment his stream of thoughts was interrupted by the ogre's attack and Magicka, seeing this, tried to scream. The next moment, the young man realized that he could not breathe and used the blow to somehow attack the ogre. Looking at the opponent, the young man thought that Ivy is Ivy, although magical, but still susceptible to fire magic. But even if he burns the vine itself, the Ivy will just continue to regenerate. It was necessary to attack so that the ogre suffered. Grabbing his sword, the young man went to attack him again and thought about the fact that it would not be possible to pierce his thick skin directly. So it was necessary to aim right here. Alto thought and attacked the ogre with a fireball right in the back. Plopping to the ground, the young man looked at his attack. The next moment his eyes darkened and he fell to the ground. Magica only looked at the ogre in shock, who was amazed and understood that the young man had won. But Alto was just a child and was able to defeat this ogre. These were Magica's last thoughts, before before she fell. Opening their eyes, both of our heroes saw the slime that was standing right above them. At that moment the sun was shining and they were on the ground, thinking that how did they get there, the young man wondered. And looking at the slime he was wondering if it was really Rue who took them out, to which he on his the tongue replied that it was so and hugging the slime. The young man thanked her, saying that he was the most reliable companion in the world. Turning to Magica, Alto said that it would be dangerous to remain unconscious there. It was very good that they were here now. The girl just kept silent in the next moment, apologizing, said that she would be the first to return to the hotel. The young man agreed and said that he would also take a break and come back. Looking at Magica, our hero was very surprised. Really Magica can use an artifact. Artifacts created by God, holy tools that can be counted on the fingers in their world. The artifact used by Magica is called the Star Rain. Alto recalled that if his memory from his past life did not fail him, in seven years the owner of this artifact would die. It was night outside and our hero, sitting in the bathtub, was thinking that it turns out that Magica had possessed the magic of an artifact all this time. The artifact is the hand of justice, a kind of squirrel, a person with these two traits according to the decision of the Vatican. Criminal element number 5 Machia X Terror. She and five other people they declared enemies of God and this has not happened yet. But in the future an order will be given to destroy them. 
the young man asked to show the skill scoreboard and a system appeared in front of our hero, looking at it. The young man thought that most likely the life indicator of Magicka is 4. In the dungeon he felt her magical energy surpassing him and an indestructible barrier. She should be incomparably stronger than him, our hero thought and here she is the difference in the standard of living but even the Vatican will ruin her in 7 years, the young man thought. Sinking under the water, he began to understand what kind of weakling he really was against her background. Would he really be able to change his fate? Our hero thought sadly. At that moment Slime appeared in front of him and our hero, surprised, surfacing from his bath, asked what she was already doing here and just sat down not to say that he also wanted to wash himself. At that moment the Slime answered something in its own language and then our hero, getting out of the bath, began to wash it. This time they got out only thanks to the slime. The young man said, rubbing Rue with a washcloth and that in gratitude the young man would rub the slime to shine, he said, and the slime was very happy about it. While the young man was rubbing the slime, she answered him something in her own language. The young man could not understand whether it was necessary to stop, because the heels of the slime were tickling. But he never thought that the slime could have heels. The next moment, the slime standing in front of him even blinded his eyes from that how much sparkled, and the young man asked if he always looks like this when he was clean. Smiling, our hero looked at the whistle and asked if Rue was happy. He just jumped with happiness and said something to the hero. The next moment he blurred like a puddle. Seeing this, the young man asked if he could not be washed and shoved the slime into the water. Coming out of the mana and bringing the slime into the room, the young man thought that he had scared him. At that moment Magica appeared in front of him, getting up from the sofa. Hello Alto. The girl said that she wanted to say something and going outside our hero decided that it would be necessary to talk there. Bringing the girl a drink. While he was carrying the drink, he thought that since they returned to the hotel, the girl had not uttered a word. Did something really happen? At that moment, bringing the drink, the young man said that the sunset was beautiful here. They looked at the night sky and Magica said that it was really so. Taking a mug, she sat very sad. And then turning to Alto, she said that she always thought that she would never lose to a magician. She had confidence that they were no match for her. Probably training made the girl too arrogant, she said. But now she realized that Magica was weak and she was still very green. So from now on she wanted to devote herself to solitary training, the girl said. Turning to Alto, Magica reported that living next to the young man would only aggravate her weakness. So she wanted a separate room. If she had not gone with him, turning to Alto, she would never have found out about it and thanked him. Next time she would definitely not lose to him. Turning to the young man again, the girl said, so at the next meeting she will try to become stronger than the young man. Hearing this, the hero's hands shook, and he began to laugh, to which Magica did not understand at all why the young man was laughing. And our hero said that the girl was saying very strange things. The next moment he apologized to her, thinking to ask that it was not about talent. There is only him. No, the most important thing is to try hard. And then clinking mugs, our hero said that he was not going to lose either and they had to meet again when each of them would become a hundred times stronger. The guys laughed and rejoiced at what they had now. But then they could not even think that no matter how hard they tried, there was still a force in this world that could destroy them in the blink of an eye. Returning to the hotel, our hero began to collect his things and looking into the bag, he realized that he had collected everything. Looking at the bed where Magica was sleeping for the last time, he closed his eyes and leaving the room thought that he had to go and keep his promise, which he gave to the girl. Since then, he lost track of time and threw himself into training. First he had to develop the crafting skill, our hero thought. Looking at his system and coming to the forest, he thought it was a great place to train. There are a lot of crystals that can be collected and the forest was also filled with mana. A crafting skill, the young man thought. Therefore, generating mana, the young man began to train by breaking stones into pieces. At this moment he received a skill increase and control over magic. All this time he was training by mining stones. In the next moment, the increase reached 20 crafting skill, and the blacksmith was opened. As the young man thought, crafting gives him not only attacking abilities like the Grave Reaper, but also the ability to create things. The materials obtained in the dungeon are fire, as well as magic for forging, and now he has already poked out his own weapon. Of course you could not worry about being chased out of the forge, holding a sword in front of him, our hero thought. Using only this sword during training, he suddenly acquired a new skill. The next moment fighting in a cave with a monster, the young man realized that there was a very strong one but it was too early for him to move to the floor, our hero thought. 
The next moment, the system reported that the young man had acquired the skill of the art of the blade and that he had surpassed level 40. A new skill was opened, two-handed style. After seeing this, the young man took out his sword and used any weapon against his opponent. Having fought with the enemy, the level was immediately raised in the next moment. To begin with, our hero thought that using the Grave Reaper, Typhoon and other attacks, he, the level of the Grave Reaper rose, combined it with magic, who got the opportunity not only to control the created crack, but also the ability to high murder potential. All this time, the level of our hero has been rising as his skills have risen. The system reported that the young man's level was 40 and he increased all skills by 30 units. The crafting skill and manipulation was available. After seeing this, the young man was very surprised what it was and then opening the system window. It was reported that part of the mana would be absorbed. The object would move in the desired direction. Looking at this our hero he pointed his hand at the stone and used the word manipulation. The stone moved to the side. Not such a noticeable skill as the Grave Reaper, but the young man thought that this skill would also be useful. He still developed the skill, so every day passed, winter soon came. Coming to the city, the young man walked past the townspeople and they were talking about something. Then our hero unwittingly overheard the conversation, heard something entertaining. Two men were standing talking about it and one of them asked if he had heard that a weirdo had recently appeared on the upper floors of the dungeon, who had filled up a thousand monsters at once. The second man said that he had also heard about him and said that the young man was just a child. For some reason he carried low-level slime everywhere with him at that moment our hero passed by them and realized that they were talking about him and when they saw the young man they could not believe themselves. After all, there are so many high-level adventurers hunting on the upper floors and in groups, looking at them. The young man was silent and thought that his life was beginning to be noticed. Last time, because of the low life index, so that he did not commit, he was simply not noticed, but perhaps something has changed. Although he actually did not allow us to call him a crank, our hero thought, looking at strangers. The next moment, the young man, standing in the hotel, wished a good day, said that tomorrow he would go to the dungeon again. So I wanted to vacate the room for two minus three days and the owner of the hotel informed the young man to be careful and asked, by the way, the girl who was next to him, was she okay? The young man, hearing this question, understood that since they had rented separate rooms, he had not seen her and then the owner said that the girl had not returned for several days and this made her worry. After hearing this, our hero squeezed his jacket and thought that it was magica. There was nothing to worry about what, and yet he was uncomfortable. The next moment, a knight on horseback rode into the city and everyone looking at him thought that the Vatican had called its knight and that it was very cool, our hero heard this, ran away from the hotel, and the owner asked what happened, to which the young man did not answer and ran away, thinking to himself about that the future he remembered was at odds with reality. But then he realized that everything was right, what he changed also affected Magicka. But why didn't he think about it? Our hero thought and did the Vatican already give orders to destroy Magicka? But what if the future in which she was executed would come now? Our hero thought and prayed that Magicka was fine, at that moment he was running past a carriage in which someone was sitting, watching our hero from the window, and thinking that what a smart boy he was. The next moment, running near the dungeon, the young man prayed that Magicka was okay and used the sense of presence, because such a strong person as Magicka should have been easy to find in the crowd and he hoped that he was not mistaken. At that moment he saw a girl, and shouted so that she heard him. Turning around, Magicka saw Alto and said that they hadn't seen each other for a long time asking how the young man was doing. What did Magicka see here and said that he was fine? After all, she wasn't weak and probably he was worried in vain. To which the young man, after catching his breath, said that everything was fine, and Magicka asked why he was breathing so hard. After hearing this our hero could not say that he had thoughts about her death, and therefore he said that he was here on a run and saw a girl, so he decided to say hello, and pretended that he ran on. Then taking off his scarf, he said that it was cold probably in such clothes as Magicka was wearing, and putting the scarf on her, asked the girl to look so that she would not catch a cold. Magicka, seeing our hero, thanked him. At that moment something with the sky was watching them and I turned my head up. The guys didn't understand what it was. The young man said that it was some kind of black clot and Magicka said that she was somehow uncomfortable with it. Then it looked like this clot was gradually increasing and feeling this aura. Our hero understood that it was bad, so the young man asked Magicka to take people away from here. The next moment, this clot began to crack and then our hero, closing his eyes, thought that this could not be, because it was a demon right in front of them. 
It was a creature controlling high-ranking monsters and why did he show up in the middle of the city, our hero thought. The next moment the demon was destroying houses that were not far from him, and they said that the demon would not stop attacking until everything around turned to ashes. He would not stop for anything, but at this moment our the hero understood that he could not move, just like the time when everything was on fire. Because of the insurmountable difference in the levels of life, the whole body would become numb, regardless of his will. The law of this world is inexorable, but the young man tried to strain his limbs and thought that he too had to make his body move, because at this rate the city would be completely destroyed. The next moment Magica put a scarf on the young man and said that everything was fine, and that Alto could rely on Magica. Jumping from his seat she was heading straight for the demon to attack it. The next moment our hero was watching carefully, thinking that it was an amazing girl. She became much stronger than before. Now Magica was very strong. The girl at that moment attacking the demon saw that she could injure him. But he used regeneration and the girl understood that he wasn't a demon, so she would have to overwhelm him with just one blow. And using her artifact Star Rain, she wanted to attack him. But the demon was moving very fast and was already behind Magiki. Turning around, the girl thought that he was very fast and the demon tried to attack her. And Magica dodged and thought that the demon did not give the opportunity to use the artifact and the next moment our hero saw only the broken pavement and thought about Magica. The young man could not understand why he could only watch, because these eight years were really wasted, our hero thought. He was not reborn in order to repeat the collapse of his previous life. The next moment, his desire caused Mana in his hands and looking at Mana, the young man thought that perhaps he could use magic without leaving his place. If he succeeds, looking in the direction of Magiki, our hero thought. The demon tried to attack Magica and she understood that because of the wind it became even more difficult. One direct blow, and she would die, the girl understood, after each attack. Because the demon was recovering and she had to catch the moment and use the artifact. The next moment attacking the demon again. He threw Magica, to which she thought that it was just unrealistic. As long as he accumulates mana, he still won't be able to attack. The next moment, the demon was spinning a huge fireball over his head and Magica, looking at him. It turned out that so she understood that she was going to die and, closing her eyes, she was waiting for her death. At that moment our hero used his manipulation skill, and then, Magica, opening her eyes, saw that the demon's fire attack was being carried away somewhere far away. Looking at the attack really, Alto didn't believe. Could he really change the trajectory of the blow? Magica thought. At that moment the demon, looking in front of him, lost his balance and then looking at our hero, Magica realized that it was a young man and then the demon. Falling right on Magica and it was her chance to attack him, the young man shouted to the girl. Using the star rain, she attacked the demon and was able to wound him so that he disappeared. Looking at this, both heroes thought that they had succeeded. Then Magica, running up to Alto, asked if he was okay and helping him up. The young man said that he had just weakness due to an increase in the level and that he will rest a little and he will feel better. Putting the guy on his back, the young man did not understand what Magica was doing. She said she would take him to the hotel and our hero asked her not to do it. But the girl said that the young man had bypassed her again and asked to be allowed to do at least that. The next moment, when they were running away, the girl said that for the first time she saw the technique that he used and realizing that Magica was talking about manipulation. The young man said that he had acquired a new skill during the time they had not seen each other. Again, using manipulation on his scarf, this scarf immediately appeared on Magica and then seeing this, the girl asked if the young man was doing it to which he replied that with the help of Mana he could move objects at will, so he could change the direction of the wind attack and block the offensive, forcing him to move in the other side. And if you train, you can control opponents like puppets. Magica, listening to our hero, said that it was an incredible skill, to which our hero explained that he himself could not move and would never have defeated the demon alone and said that it was Magica who saved this city. Addressing her, to which the girl, blushing, said that she thought that they both tried, our hero laughed in response. The next moment, he remembered that who had defeated the demon last time, wondering to himself, and that if he continued in the same spirit, then there would be no trace of the city. The next moment our hero was thinking to himself that he did not remember hearing about something like this, so someone had to defeat him, who could be strong enough to defeat the demon, the young man thought, 
At that moment he felt this aura and asked the girl to stop when they, they ran across the roof. Magica, turning her attention to our hero, said that they had not reached yet. But the young man asked to stop now, then suddenly Magica stopped. Stopping in the middle of the roof, the young man looked down and thought that he had no time to forget this figure. These black clothes, oppressive mama. As if this man was not from this world. This man was a magician who killed Hannah in a previous life. This man who stood right in front of our hero Gamogen, stood and looked away. Looking at Alto, Magica thought that she had seen him like this for the first time, and asked who it was at all. To which the young man replied that it was Gamogen Salsway, one of the twelve commanders of Euphonia. Hearing this Magica thought that even she had heard, because Tone was the strongest magician in the world. At this moment, while she was reasoning, Alto began to collect her magic and then Magica asked what Alto was doing. Our hero in a fit of anger said that it did not concern the girl, because he had to kill this magician and then Magica stopped the hero and asked if the young man was going to fight in such a state. The young man was already looking at Magica, who was grabbing his hand and she said that the young man was too weak after raising the level, and would not be able to resist this magician. Our hero only asked her to let go and at that moment Magica asked Alto to calm down and sit. Didn't he understand? Because now he couldn't win shouting at the guy and trying to reason with him. To which the young man calmed down and thought that the girl was right. In such a state he could not defeat the magician. Leaning on the roof of the house, our hero was depressed. At that moment, the same magician was standing and looking at his invention. And then the guy next to him asked what it meant that the demon was summoned by the magician and whether it was him, Mr. Gamogen but that he answered that it was him and that he got into his hands a rare object for summoning and he wanted to try it out. But it was useless, the thing could only summon a low-ranking ogre, breaking the thing in his hands, he said. Unfortunately, before Gamogen had time to intervene, someone had already defeated him without difficulty. Then the young man behind the magician said that the strength of even such a weak demon was enough to destroy a small state. Twelve commanders of Euphonia obey only royal orders their duty is to protect the country. Such a thing is simply unacceptable. At this moment the magician looked at the guy and lifting him up, bound his neck with magic. Turning to the young man, whom he kept at the top, the magician asked about the desire to use things that had fallen into someone's hands, of course, whether he did not think and that it was in his own interests to keep his opinion to himself, to which, gasping, the guy said that he was very sorry the next moment the young man was falling straight into the ground. The magician ordered that a carriage be served to him, because he would return to the capital and continue his research. At that moment another young man addressed Mr. Gamogen and said that he still did not find the one he was looking for. Did he really want to leave everything as it is? To which the magician said that that person was not it was in the city. Getting into a carriage and saying that, however, when he saw our heroes, the magician thought that Machia would carry out terror. He did not expect to find one of the enemies of the Vatican in such a place. At that moment, our heroes saw the look of this man and were dumbfounded with horror, to which the magician thought that it must have been Machia who defeated the demon and that she was strong, and you probably came out of her body parts with wonderful ingredients. Gamogen thought about what he could do with the girl right now and here he thought, but then stopped, because there were no orders for her destruction yet, if he went against the king. He would stop supporting his experiments and the risk was too great, the magician thought, so he told his coachman to go, because they will meet the girl again. The magician's carriage was leaving, and our heroes just looked after them and realized that the magician's look scared them so much. Magica said that she thought that he would definitely kill them now, sitting thinking that here's the commander of Euphonia, she said and looking at Alto asked how our hero was. The young man looked at the floor and thought that how stupid he was and thought that he could now fight with this magician, because he was a real monster. So straining the guy thought that when they meet again, he will be stronger than him Gajan. Looking at the sky our hero thought. A few days later, the Lord of Kinetogris expressed a desire to publicly thank Magica for exercising the demon. Magica refused, asking if they had forgotten about Alto, to which they did not want to admit at the top that someone with such a standard of living as a young man could have such power. After that, the Lord seemed to give up. Did our hero really ask Magica? She definitely did not want recognition. Was she sure of this and while they were walking around the city, they reasoned. Magica said that she was sure the guys were completely uncooperative, and thought why none of them wanted to recognize the power of Alto. Turning to Alto she asked. Alto said that there was nothing to be done, because in their world everything is decided by the standard of living. He thought to himself that among all those he met, only Hannah and Magica ignored this rule. Smiling and looking at the girl, our hero thought. 
and turning to Magica, he said that rather than worry about it, it was better for her to devote herself to training and Magica said that when Alto spoke like that, Magica began to wonder if everything was okay with the guy. Our hero said that he was thinking of dropping into the dungeon again tomorrow at that moment they passed by a man who was watching them carefully and stopping. The young man turned to him, to which Magica asked what attracted the hero's attention and then he said that just the face seemed familiar to him and looking at the person in front of him he I saw the same man who worked in the guild. The man was sitting on the asphalt, it was Lion, and it was written on his sign that he needed warmth and affection. At that moment he saw our hero, and when he saw an employee of the guild, he was surprised and remembered what was connected with Lion. When he saw our hero, Lion shouted that it was him, did the young man not remember him? To which our hero showed all his dislike for the young man and said that he had seen him for the first time. Of course, Lion did not believe our hero, because his face could not be forgotten and said that in truth he was in a difficult situation, and that now he would not have been prevented by their support in the form of money. Our heroes only passed by and our hero, turning further to Magica, asked on which floor of the dungeon the girl was training, pretending that they ignored the guy. The next moment, Lion threw himself at the feet of our hero and asked to lend him money, to which our hero, trying to disconnect the guy from himself, asked why he was warming his ears and also asked him to lend him money, and that he had no shame at all, to which Lion, addressing the guys, said that he thought that they have potential, they just kept silent and looked at the guy. The next moment, Lion, addressing the guys and pointing at himself, suggested that they all create a group of adventurers together. Lion offered to start all over again and, addressing the guys, introduced himself as Lion. He was also an adventurer and offered to work with the guys together, another pair of hands would always come in handy in battle. Besides, he asked not to be surprised when they heard, but he was a hero, this is a mega rare profession. He said, our hero smiling, said Lion that he did not agree with his proposal, to which Lion did not understand at all why the young man objected. The young man thought to himself that although it was rare to meet a hero, it was unlikely that he would be useful to them. Magica was yawning behind our hero at that moment, and Lion was kneeling in front of him and asked the young man to change his mind. He even left the guild specifically for this, Lion said. Hearing this our hero and said that yes, probably. He was probably just caught red-handed and thrown out. The next moment, Lion did not understand how the young man understood this, but then he realized that he had screwed up and our hero, sighing, said that this was why he preferred to earn money by hunting in the dungeons. The young man explained, the next moment Lion was already jumping on our hero, and just suggested that they take him in. Then Magica couldn't stand it anymore, she gave Lion half a loaf and said that he had already got everyone. Lion landed on the ground, lay behind our guys, and they were moving away from Lion and talking to each other, Magica informed Alto that she was hungry, to which the young man replied that he had recently come across a good place and offered her to go there together. A few days later, in the dungeon, our hero fought with a large number of opponents and after defeating them, he raised his level to 42, and passive possession of the blade was increased to 43, and thought that the blade he forged turned out to be very good. Even after a few days, Lion did not stop chasing him, but whether the young man would follow him to the upper level, the young man thought that it was necessary to try to climb another floor. The next moment I heard some sound and it was Lion running, and a lot of wolves were running after him and he was shouting for someone to save him. When he saw Lion, the young man was very surprised, to which he asked our hero to get rid of the wolves that were chasing him and then the guy using his magic asked Lion to duck and using the flame. He attacked the opponents. Seeing this, Lion said that it was very cool. The next moment our hero ran up to Lion, and he was on his knees thanking the young man again, because he was following the viola and found himself on the upper levels. At that moment Alto, running up to Lion, asked what he was thinking at all, beginners had no place here. Lion explained that he wanted to create a team with him and Magica, to which our hero asked how many more times it was necessary to repeat it so that Lion finally got it because he would only get in the way. The young man said that he didn't have time to mess with him. The next moment Lion sitting on his knees, he only quietly apologized to our hero. The young man, turning away, said that if he understood everything, he should have returned sooner. At that moment a wolf attacked Lion and then the young man, seeing this, attacked the wolf that was right in front of him and tried to ask Lion if he was alive, looking at the wounded young man. The next moment, he could not believe what he saw and, kneeling down, said that it was Alto's fault. If Alto had accepted Lion, this would not have happened, because the young man was lying wounded on the ground. As soon as Lion heard the words of our hero, 
He immediately jumped up and asked if it was true that the young man could accept him. Our hero was very scared and asked if Lion was alive, to which he was rubbing his neck wound saying that he had not told him. But Lion was a vampire. Hearing this our the hero was very surprised by this news. They say vampires, a race that has immortality. They go out hunting under the cover of night. People are afraid of these creatures along with monsters. But our young man tried to ask if this was true or not pointing to Lion, to which Lion replied that they were not so different from humans and said that it was people who came up with a horror story about vampires, but their bodies were actually similar to human ones, Lion explained, but serious wounds were equally fatal for them. But then he explained to our hero that he was just special and invulnerable. Having heard about the invulnerable, apparently the young man was thinking about whether he really had the ability to regenerate. And then our hero decided to ask how the young man got hit, to which he replied that it was a long story and then said that he also had high resistance to pain. The next moment Alto asked to tell to him and whether a person can somehow earn this ability. Lion explained that a person could not earn it, no race could do it and that he did not get it by his own work and if he told this to a young man, he would not believe him. The next moment he explained that he was not from this world. Hearing this our hero was very surprised. Lion explained that he used to live in another world, in a country called Japan, where he was an ordinary person, but he died in an accident and was reborn in euphony. And when he was dying, he was insanely scared. Lion desperately prayed that he did not want to die, but woke up in another world, in a body that does not know the fear of death. The next moment our hero, hearing this story, thought that there were people who had gone through something similar to Alto. The next moment Lion said that resistance to pain also appeared back then, to which Lion said that it was not quite so. He gained this ability in the early years his new life. For an alien from another world, it seemed to Lion like a dream come true, a vampire race and a body that is not afraid of death, and even the profession of a hero. Lion had a feeling that he was reborn into the main character of some book, remembering his life, the young man thought. But a few years later this feeling evaporated. According to the teachings, a vampire hunt began in Fortinia, and Lion's parents were killed right before his eyes, the young man said. He could not be killed, so they took him to the church as a heretic. Endless tortures began there in the name of divine justice. The body of the young man did not die, but he felt pain perfectly. Everyday suffering made him think that death would be his best fate. Lion recalled his childhood, but he remained alive. Fifty years passed, and one day his pain threshold reached the limit. He no longer felt a drop of pain. Standing on the bonfire, Lion recalled all this, then seizing the moment. The young man tried to escape. He ran and ran for a very long time and very far. And for the next couple of centuries he had to hide his real identity from everyone. Then he arrived in Kinetogris and got a job in the guild. Therefore, standing in front of our hero, telling him all this in the movie story, Lion informed Alto that he would not be able to acquire the same skill. And our hero, listening to this whole terrible story, could not believe that Lion had gone through so much and apologized to him for making him remember all this. Lion smiled and asked the young man not to take it into his head. These were days gone by. Lion still could not stop regretting only one thing. If he was strong enough, he would be able to protect his family. This was the only thing he regretted. At this moment our hero remembered himself in the past life. Lion said that of course he also wanted to earn money, so he joined the guild. But besides that he wanted to become even stronger. So he asked the young man again. Leon asked if Alto would create a team with him and Alto just turned away and left. At that moment Leon, looking at the young man, thought that he was good for nothing. To which our hero asked how long Lion was going to stand there and asked him to go with him soon. Or the young man was afraid of the pace of our hero's training. He asked, hearing this Lion was very happy. After hearing about the training and beaming with joy, Lion said that he was only in joy. The young man looking at Lion, who was playing with slime, thought that although he could not understand all the hardships of life in an immortal body, the desire to protect dear people was perfectly familiar to him and he could not just leave like that a young man. That's how their training started. So our hero began to fight against his opponents again and using the power of the Grave Reaper. He trained on his skills again, the next moment, not far from our hero. The opponents with whom he had previously fought attacked Lion and he shouted to his teacher to come to his aid. Our hero understood that there were many opponents and that Lion had to stop fighting like a man. Alto informed Lion, who was covering his head from the fire of our hero who was smashing monsters, that it was also important to think through attacks. But Lion was a vampire, 
which meant he was stronger. First you had to try to attack without thinking, with all your might, and then giving Lion a sword. He agreed with our hero and already fought against opponents, having struck them. He turned to Alto and called him as a teacher, saying that he was right. At that moment our hero saw what strength Lion had. The next moment, looking at Lion, who was swinging his sword, Alto asked what strength and what standard of living Lion had in the standard of living. So when he heard, he said that he had four. After hearing this, the guy understood that his level was the same as Magiki's. So Alto only and all that remained was to train Leon. They continued to improve their skills. Lion raised the level with his life at a frightening pace. At first he fought a little clumsily, but soon easily overtook our hero. They began to pass the dungeon at a speed that Alto could not even dream of. And every ten floors Magicka joined them to defeat the local boss. The floors flew by, and then... When they hit the monster, Lion told the teacher that their result of passing this dungeon would go down in history. Magicka never dreamed that the day would come when they would defeat the boss of the 90th floor. So six years passed and our hero, standing on the body of the boss, turned to Magicka and Lion, informing that it was all thanks to, to them, because he wanted to reach the 100th floor. But time was running out and said that from that moment the game moves to a new level. Hannah's death is one year away. The next moment in the guild, our hero, Having gathered, left and then the owners asked if the young man was leaving. He said that it was really so and thanked her for her hospitality. The girl asked where our hero would go, saying that she would even be lonely without him. The young man reported that he said that there was one school in the capital of Yafonia where he wanted to go. At that moment Magica and Lion were running down the stairs, going down to Alto. Lion, addressing our hero, asked if the young man was really leaving the city and Magica, standing next to him, said that she had heard about it for the first time. The young man decided to leave alone and then the young man looked at the guys, to which they asked why he didn't tell them anything, to which he said he wanted to to say goodbye to them. The young man thought to himself that Hannah's death was one year away, now he needed to fully concentrate on protecting her. There will be a fight with Gamogen, our hero thought. In a battle with him he may have to sacrifice his life, and he was not going to involve the innocent in this. Lion, looking at our hero, said that the young man probably had his own reasons, and Magicka coming forward said that she would go with him, because she never managed to repay the young man for all that he did for her six years ago. The girl said and Magicka would not allow the young man to escape when he went so far, to which Lion, Hugging our hero, said that of course he goes with them and that students always follow in the footsteps of teachers. For these six years no young man has become stronger. Magica reported that if something happened, they would come to the rescue. Our hero, looking at the two of them, was surprised at first, and then laughed because it seemed that he had no choice and offered them all to go together. So they got into the carriage and drove off. While they were driving through the mountains, Lion sat in the carriage and said that he was bored, yawning and looking ahead because they had been driving for four days and where were they going at all. Our hero said that they would come down from the mountain and Lion would see everything for himself, if he had nothing to do. He could join Alto was talking about his training, concentrating Mana. At that moment Magica was sitting next to him and watching the young man. When Lion heard what our hero was offering him, he told him that he didn't want to do it and thanked him, because only a young man could train just sitting on the spot. To which Magica asked our hero what they would do when they arrived in Euphonia. To which the young man said that he was going to enroll to school. The school at the royal court is one of the best and most inaccessible in the country. After hearing about the school, Lion was very surprised. Asking if our hero was seriously going to study and why he needed it, the young man just kept silent. The next moment the carriage ran into something and Lion almost fell out of it shouting. At that moment our heroes were thinking about what was already happening and looking at their coachman they were surprised. The next moment he said that the wheel got into a fault and got stuck. He would try to do something about it do it, but maybe they won't get any further. Magica turned to Alto and asked what they would do. He hit his head, getting up, looking at the girl, said that there was no other way out. He would have to walk to which Lion said that he would not have to, he had to rely on him. The next moment the driver asked if the young man could pull out this wheel. Unfolding his belt, Lion said that it would not be quite like that. The man's help would no longer be needed, Lion said, and that he could leave the cart here and return with the horse himself. The next moment Lion lifted a whole huge piece of land on which the cart was standing and ran with him through the mountains, because he thought that traveling in a cart would look more heroic. But he wanted to get off the ground as soon as possible. Looking into the cart, which he put on the ground, Lion turned to the teacher and asked if he was useful, which looking inside, he saw Magica and our hero, 
who were lying on top of each other and she said that the force had to be counted. Alto was also dissatisfied and told Lion, so that he would come up to him here for a second. Next time they would go without him, if he did something like that. Hitting Lion, our hero reported. The next moment, Lion was sitting with a bump on his head and thought that the young man would be glad if they arrived faster. Which, looking at the road behind him, the young man thought that they really saved. The next moment, the capital of Euphonia was already in front of them, our hero said. And turning to Magica and Lion, he told them to take care of the luggage, and he would go ahead and jumping out, the young man ran forward to the capital. While our hero was running, he thought that Hannah was here, very close to his dear unique Hannah and thought that he wanted to go to the royal school because of their past together and even if in this life they would not become lovers, as before, he wanted to see the girl now. At that moment, Hannah was in the middle of the street and turning around. She looked around that the woman standing next to her was asking what happened to Hannah. And the girl explained that her heart suddenly started beating so hard, as if the person you've been looking for for years was very close, and she felt something like this for the first time. Together with a woman, the girl spoke. To which she replied that who knows, maybe the person destined for the girl by fate was somewhere nearby. After hearing about it, the girl talked about the person destined by fate, and asked who he was, to which the woman said that she could not know this, but the girl should not have worried, because how as soon as she meets him, she will immediately understand everything. The next moment, Hannah asked how she could understand this, even though she didn't know this person at all. But that was how human destinies were arranged at that moment. Our hero ran into the city from the tunnel, and Hannah was standing very close to him. Lion and Magica also entered the city and Lion, looking around, thought about how it looked like the capital, a city to match the hero, to which our hero, whom they caught up with, asked in what sense Lion was talking. Then Lion explained that in the world where he lived in such places there was always work for heroes. Alto did not know what to say to him, but this city is the heart of the kingdom, and three million people live in it. Pointing towards the castle, Alto said that if you look there, Lion will see the royal castle and various administrative bodies around. The residences of the highest aristocracy are everywhere, and opposite the castle is a huge church of the state religion Fortimus. So everyone had to watch what they say and do. The next moment, Lion saw Fortimus in the church, looked at her and said that he did not want to approach her at all. The next moment they checked into a hotel and then our hero asked what Magica and Lion were going to do now because he would start preparing for the entrance exams to the royal school. Hearing this Lion was very surprised that there was an exam in this school, to which the young man replied that the school was the best in the country for that. There is a guild and a dungeon in the city, although less than in Kinetogris, but the problem with finding adventures, the young man thought that they would not have. The next moment, our hero reported that they knew where the young man was staying and if they needed something, they could call him, to which Lion said that everything was fine, Exchanging glances with Magica left our hero alone. The school at the royal court, the admission campaign and the young man approaching this school thought about how many people were in front of it. 10,000 people are applying for 100 places this year. Finding Hannah among all is like a needle in a haystack. The young man thought and decided to look around inside while there is time. In the next moment he passed by the bench that attracted his attention and remembered his past life. Because here they often spent time together with Hana it was 70 years ago, our hero thought. And if he passes, he will be able to see her. The next moment, something attracted his attention and then he saw Lion begging someone from the admissions committee and asking if it was impossible to turn a blind eye to this, to which the girl explained that she could not do it. Then our hero asked what Lion and Magica were doing here. Lion saw Alto and turned to the teacher, and Magica said that they decided to test their strength and also pass the exam. To which Lion reported that the girl was not telling the truth, in fact, she just wanted to take the young man to school. At that moment Magica hit Lion and asked him to shut up. Lion, lying on the ground, asked why Magica was beating him with all her might. She was standing up and despite the guy said that if she had invested all her strength, the young man would not have risen anymore. The next moment someone from the admissions committee asked our hero what about the fee for passing the exam. Hearing the young man was very surprised about the contribution. Then Lion reported, lying on the ground, that they did not have enough money, and they tried to negotiate, to which the young man asked what happened to the money they had accumulated. Magica said that Lion had let them down when they were walking around the elite area, and the girl spent everything on expensive food. The young man started to say that while he was away, they were doing it. 
but someone appeared and said that they were students this year were very noisy, and then the guys felt the magic of the wind and did not understand what was happening. A man appeared in front of them, saying that it was a school with a rich history and noble traditions, and not a place for uncivilized provincials. Our hero saw Deutsch, to which Lyon asked who it was in general, saying that once he said that they were uncivilized provincials, and he himself threw magic at people and if he was looking for a fight, then clenching his fist, Lyon was already ready. Our hero is trying to stop Lyon. He asked him to calm down, because it was one of the school professors. If he gets into trouble it will affect the results. He thought about Deutsch to himself, he was always interested only in the social status and standard of living of the student. The next moment this very teacher asked where these three were from. After all, on one at first glance they were not from the nobility. But at that moment he saw Alto and told him that the young man was really going to take their exam with the first level of life. Our hero looked in surprise at the man in front of him. He said that there was nothing to talk about here, because the young man could return home. The probability that he would pass is zero. He would only pay the entrance fee in vain and he did not think that his companions would have chances, looking at Magica and Lyon stipulated. But at this moment, our hero thinks for himself that Deutsch left him no choice and thanks him for his concern. The young man said that, however, he would enroll and decide. No, he would show only the exam results. He had no doubt that those who judge students solely on their merits work at this school. Putting a bag of money and paying the entrance fee, our hero left. Deutsch, looking at the departing guys who asked him to forgive him, thought that the young man was too arrogant, talking about Alto. Did he really imagine himself to be God knows what with the first level of life? If so, then Deutsch wanted to see what the young man was really capable of and also went the other way. The exam was held in two stages, one was before lunch, it was a written exam, and after lunch it was a practical one and therefore at first all the students sat in the classroom and took written exams. The young man had a task, a mounted detachment that moves at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, and a foot detachment 4 kilometers per hour, and a detachment bringing equipment 2 kilometers per hour, at which point each of them should hit the road so that all three arrive at their destination 30 kilometers at the same time. Our hero at this moment, solving this problem, looked at Lyons and wondered if he was okay, because he saw how the guy's brain was boiling. Then the young man looked at Magica and realized that it looked like she was coping easily, because she was preparing hard and thinking that he couldn't relax either. The next moment Deutsch was right in front of him and thought that it was pointless for a guy with his life to try, because the results of written testing alone were not enough to pass, and there will be no concessions on the practical part. Because Deutsch himself will take this exam, tapping on the floor with his cane, he thought. Deutsch was expecting everyone and said that now they would start the practical part of the exam. Their task, addressing the students, would be to destroy this cube that stood right in front of him, showing everyone, Deutsch said, and that they could use any methods, but they could not think that it would be easy, and our heroes watched this moment carefully from the podium for what was happening. After that, the students began to take turns breaking this cube and each of them could not pass, what only they did not try to crack this cube, but he did not even move who would be able to break this damn enhanced magic at all. And Deutsch only noted in his notebook that so far no one has passed the exam. Another year full of weaklings, he thought. At that moment Magica came out on the field and Lyon supported her and shouted for the girl to show everyone. She only asked Lyon to shut up. Seeing Magiku Deutsch realized that it was that squirrel who was making noise in the admissions office. Thinking about the girl's name, the teacher thought that he had already heard it somewhere, no matter how she was just a beast man. The teacher thought and she was probably trying to break the cube only with the help of force. But reinforced magic is one of the best, it is impossible to destroy by efforts, by a half-serious attack, Deutsch said. At this moment, Magica, throwing up the cube and trying to unravel its secrets and hitting it, she made a crack in the cube, after which it broke and then everyone applauded standing up. The guys shouted that the cube split and the girl did a great job. Seeing this Deutsch did not understand what kind of blow it was, but it wasn't just a punch with incredible speed and accuracy. Looking at the cube and remembering the attack, the teacher realized that the girl had struck numerous blows at the same place and the next time he remembered. Magica is the same one designated by the Vatican and the risk factor, Magica Estate Terra. Why this beastman came to school, the teacher thought and said that the girl passed. The next in line was Lyon and approaching the cube, he said that he was next, then Deutsch, looking at this guy, thought that this guy was not in a risk factor or something like that, a simple fool. At that moment Lyon, 
carried the ball right over the cube and told everyone to get ready. The next moment, everything was destroyed and Deutsch, closing his eyes with his staff, could not understand what was in front of him, then splitting into a million small pieces of the cube, and Lyon asked if it was so normal. Deutsch, sitting in shock, looked at the young man, and then thought that he had been taking exams for how many years, but he had never seen anyone manage to destroy the cube to the extent, and then, getting angry, Deutsch said that the guy passed. Lyon, leaning towards Deutsch, said that he certainly passed and was glad that the teacher did not get hurt. So Deutsch announced the next one with a look and he would like to say that he could not do this anymore and that he needed to take a short break to recover and then the scene was restored and Deutsch had no idea how they did it these self-taught students, one of whom was designated by the Vatican as a risk factor, destroyed the place of the exams. There were never such results. Deutsch addressed all the professors and reported it. The next moment, one of them said that these guys from the admissions committee had problems, whether it was true and whether the teacher was sure that they could be enrolled. One of the professors said that they were at the fourth level. If they could join the ranks of the Euphonia army, they would glorify the school. But another said that it was obvious that these were problems and I turned to Deutsch. Everyone was waiting for what he would say to which he said that they certainly have behavior problems, but they do not accept students with the fourth standard of living to school every day. If Deutsch would guide them and then they they will become excellent students and if Deutsch insisted so much, then they could accept it. Deutsch, looking at the sheet, thought that the problem was only in one student, and the name of Alto appeared. Despite his success, he was a dropout with the first standard of living and should be rejected. But Deutsch had a bad feeling if the young man passed, it would become a stain on their school, which they would talk about forever, and they had to reject him, no matter what it cost them, Deutsch thought. So he used the ILO spell in Cuba, putting the cube on the stage in front of everyone. Deutsch reported that the restoration work had been completed, and that now they could resume exams again and thought that there should be no first-class students enrolled in the school. Reinforcing magic was applied to this cube with the addition of ALO's absorption, the more forces are applied, the stronger the cube becomes. Even a young man will be able to use powerful magic. It is unlikely to destroy the cube. Deutsch thought it was possible to start. The next moment a young man came on stage and Deutsch realized that it wasn't Alto at all, so he cursed everything to himself because he thought that this guy would be next. There were three of them. Did the young man approach the reception desk not with them? Then Deutsch thought that the guy in front of him anyway I was not sure that the young man would be able to pass this exam and asked the guy to start. The young man began to attack the lips and looking at him, Deutsch thought, were all two levels like that and that the young man did not control mana at all. Why was he so worried about level 1 when he was worse? At that moment Deutsch said that the young man did not pass, but the cube transformed and the next moment the teacher did not understand what's going on. Energy began to pour out of the cube and then red mana appeared. Then Deutsch fell, did not understand what was happening. Everyone looked down and did not understand what was below, they say that this guy was cool. But the thing was different, this mana was rampaging and descending from the stands the young man asked everyone to evacuate. And he will stop mana and going down the young man saw a whirlwind in front of him. The guy understood to himself that mana was not just raging. He did not understand what was going on at all. At that moment Alto saw Deutsch trying to stop this strong pressure and understood that even his protective magic could not stand. If he was not careful, everything would spoil. The next moment, the teacher picked up the student and realized that his magic was exhausted. If it continued in the same spirit, they could not avoid injuries. Sitting in a whirlwind, Deutsch used a magic shield, but it was bad, he could not hold it. And then our hero used hacking to calm the wind. Looking at this, the teacher was very surprised. At that moment our hero approached them, asked if everything was okay. Then Deutsch asked how the young man was I did what he said it didn't matter. He needed to deploy shields and ensure safety and he would stop the flash, the guy ordered, addressing Deutsch. Deutsch told the young men not to talk nonsense. Even he was capable of such a thing that the young man just looked at him. The teacher said that the cube was incredibly dangerous now. One extra movement and an explosion would happen. At that moment the young man stretched out his hand to the cube and using his energy tried to stop him. Deutsch, looking at this, thought it was incredible. Did the guy neutralize mana? The next moment our hero was injured and looking at the cube in front of him. He was able to stop it all, and apparently ALOs was imposed on the cube, our hero said. Taking the cube in his hands, the young man said that since only students with strong magical abilities study at this school, the teacher might not know about it, but this spell only works when very weak magic is used. It has a special effect that makes it extremely weak. 
Then Deutsch, looking at our hero, asked who he was and the teacher thought that, as he correctly thought, the young man was a half-educated man with the first standard of living. Just even a half-educated man like him, if he worked tirelessly, would be able to do anything. At that moment the cube that radiated energy to the full, it was destroyed and Deutsch said that the guy passed the exam. Listening to the heroes, everyone was congratulated on the successful passing of the exam and at that moment they were in the store, where they were trying on the uniform of the court school, and the seller congratulated the guys on the successful passing of the exam. To which the heroes, dressing in uniform looked incredibly beautiful, and Lion, adjusting his clothes, said that he had never worn anything so luxurious before, are the hero, addressing Lion, said that the young man was very becoming. And especially it went for Lion when Lion was silent. So Lion, turning to Alto, asked what he meant. At that moment Magica came out to them and asked if there was nothing more comfortable. The girl was wearing a uniform with a skirt and the girl said that in such an outfit she would not be able to move enough quickly. And her feet were freezing. When they saw her, the guys said that the girl was very becoming and she looked like a real aristocrat. Lion, looking at Magica, said that there is a proverb for such cases, a stump is good in a headdress, to which Magica, hitting Lion on the head, said that they did not give him the word, so they all chose the form together and then the seller asked if they had any problems with measurements. The guys said that everything it was great, and in this case, giving the sheet to the guys, the seller said that in this case the tailoring would take no more than two weeks, the price of ten gold per person. Looking at this, the guys did not understand if they really had to pay for clothes. Alto, turning to them, asked what happened to the guys, to which Lion said that you could live for 10 gold coins for 6 months and the boy said that it was just clothes and then our hero realized that they too had no money and said that he would pay for them. Because there was nothing there's nothing to do. The next moment, Magica said that this could not be in any case. Alto was already paying them a fee for the exam and then the guys approached the seller asking if they could pay upon receipt. He said that they could certainly do it. Then taking Alto, they decided to immediately go to the guild in search of our hero did not understand the most profitable tasks. Did they really drag him too? Then Lion said that the young man was with a mentor, unless he would leave his students alone in trouble. So they came to the guild and looked at the bulletin board. In front of them was the extermination of goblins for which they paid 12 copper coins to defeat the great mouse in the sewer 20 silver. With such requests, they do not earn much. Lion thought, because at this rate they will not be able to accumulate 10 gold coins in two weeks, although before the royal capital, and there are quite a lot of requests here. At this moment he found a good task with a reward of 30 gold. Alto, looking at Lion, asked if they really paid 30 gold and what he was asked to do there, so on. Reading Lion, said that it was necessary to subdue the fire dragon living in the northern mountains and our hero said that it was impossible to take this task. Everyone was surprised and asked why. The hero explained that the dragon is a legendary creature that survived the War of the Gods 150 years ago. They say that only the appearance of one of these creatures is a catastrophe capable of destroying the country. After hearing about the catastrophe, Magica asked if such monsters existed in this world at all. And then our hero explained that they do not appear very often, but definitely exist. In a previous life he once encountered and even fought with one of them. But then even at level 99 all he could do was escape. Then looking at it, Lion asked if it was so dangerous. In that case it was a ridiculous price of 30 gold coins. It's certainly a high price, but it's incommensurable with the risk as a former guild employee. He would say that 1,000 gold coins should be enough and our hero understood that Lion was right. Magica turned to Lion and asked if it could be disinformation, and then holding a piece of paper in his hands. He said that it would be so, then the supervision would remove this ad. Here he is very strict about disinformation. The young man understood that this was his chance to change history. There is something hidden in this request and he thought. At this moment Alto was telling the young men that he was getting a little curious and decided that it was necessary to accept this request. Lion said when he left that he would take care of everything and our hero said that it was quite rare to meet a dragon. So they needed to prepare properly at that moment someone was watching them. A week later, our heroes again fought monsters on their way. Magica said no matter how much they searched, they only came across unnecessary monsters. Maybe the task was really a deception. Standing on a huge boar, Magica said, Lion, looking around, did not think it was possible. And our hero, approaching the monster, which was already defeated, said that it was getting dark a little and therefore they needed to set up camp. 
Having set up camp, the guys lit a fire and then began to eat food. Lion said that it was very tasty and still the best part of their trip was that they ate everything together. Our hero, holding the slime in his hands, said that if they sold the collected materials magic stones, they would be able to pay for their uniforms. He was sorry, of course, that they never managed to meet the dragon. But tomorrow morning they should return to Euphonia, the hero said. Magica, sitting and eating her food, said that she would miss their joint adventures very much and Alto confirmed her words, saying that he would miss them too, but now at night he wanted to give them something. At that moment the guys asked what it was and Alto took out the pendants that he made with the help of blacksmithing skills, putting into them all the strength that he had and gave everyone a pendant. Magica, holding her pendant in her hands, felt a mysterious force, so gentle and at the same time so strong. Our hero said that he initially assumed that he would be alone all the time, but now they were already eating together around the campfire. He could not imagine his future so warm, so these pendants are his way express gratitude to them and our hero, and smiling, thank your friends. After dinner, the guys all fell asleep. At that moment, opening his eyes, the hero thought that it was hot and that it was impossible to sleep. And then everyone woke up asking why it was so hot. Getting out of the tent, they saw that the forest was burning and that it was a flame. Was it really a dragon? The next moment the giant dragon started screaming and the guys looking at him thought that it was really a dragon. The assignment in the guild was true and looking in front of them they decided that the dragon itself had even caught fire and it was a bad thing. So they had to run. The next moment Lion asked how the gems were, to which the guys, grabbing him, said that they needed to run faster. At that moment, the dragon was spewing its flames right where Lion had been until recently and they barely had time. Lion's leg was smoking after the dragon's attack. The next moment they were standing in a circle of flames and Magica was saying that there was nowhere else to run and it looked like the only way to survive was to defeat this dragon. The young man recalled that the dragons he fought in a previous life were intelligent enough to speak humanly, but this dragon did not talk and looked smaller, which meant that the young man had to defeat someone even stronger. You can't let fear take over him, otherwise he won't save Hannah, our hero thought. The next moment, the young man used a water cut to attack the dragon, because if it was a fire dragon, then its weak point was the water element. The next moment the dragon used a shield, which our hero did not expect at all, which means magic will not break through it, he thought. At that moment Magica started from her place and said that she will help. Lion ran with her and so they both attacked the dragon. Having kicked the dragon, Magica understood that he was very strong physically, so they would not cause any damage to his life, and then our hero thought that the dragon must have a weak spot. Remembering his past life, at this moment whether he shouted for Magica to distract him, and Alto would finish the dragon with one blow, and then the girl tried to distract the dragon, but it was useless. Lion, running away from the dragon's flame, said that he had not even attacked yet, why was the dragon chasing him? The young man understood that now was certainly not the right time to change goals. But what if Lion used his provocative skills and then the young man, addressing Lion, said that he had a great plan. Lion asked the master not to delay and told him, so Alto shouted for Lion to get hit by a dragon, begging him. To which Lion did not understand at all what the guy was saying. No matter how immortal he was, Lion would not tolerate a dragon attack. Alto tried to assure his friend that everything would be fine. He would use his magic to weaken this dragon and ask to trust him. Then Lion had no choice but to believe the young man, and that he was a very cruel mentor, Lion said. Standing up directly against the dragon at this moment, our hero used a hacking attack and then together they tried to resist the dragon. The next moment our hero commanded Magicka to go on the attack. And looking at the dragon, she understood that the dragon's abdominal scales were his weak point. So she hit him directly and the dragon howled in pain. The next moment she realized that everything worked out, she had to act decisively. So she used a freezing star. Magica wanted to attack the dragon, but the dragon hit her with its tail, so that Magica landed on the ground and lay on the ground without moving. At that moment our heroes were very much afraid for their girlfriend. The next moment after Magica was knocked to the ground by the dragon, the pendant on her neck suddenly began to react and the actions of the equipment make it possible to avoid instant death. At that moment Magica was falling straight to the ground, but the next moment she felt that the pendant was pulling her right behind it. The actions of the equipment made it possible to avoid instant death, so falling to the ground, she did not hit to death. Trying to get up, she understood that the dragon was trying to step on her and then the guys shouted and called the girl. And then they ran to her aid. The next moment the dragon stepping on the place where Magica was lying, understood that under there was no one under his foot. Looking around, the dragon did not understand at all where the girl had gone. 
At that moment our hero managed to save Magicka and Lion helped him hold the girl in his arms and told our hero that he did not think that the grave spell could be used so. At that moment our hero said that in such moments like now, you can use it to evade urgently. Lion held Magicka in his arms and asked how the girl felt, whether she was okay, to which Magicka said that it was so. Then turning to the master, Lion asked about the analeptic and then the young man said that he was in the tent but she was burned by a dragon. At that moment the slime that stood next to our hero, she gave something to a young man. And when she saw it, our hero did not understand whether it was him. Halto could not believe that an antileptic took the slime. Lion, addressing a friend, said that he was a good fellow. The next moment they had already given Magicka an antileptic, and the girl came to life and apologized to them. The girl said that she was careless, but without the pendant that Alto gave her, she definitely would not have survived. After this, but now she will show this dragon what she was capable of. The guys asked her not to hurry, because Alto and Lion would take care of the dragon, and Magicka had to hide where they were now. Magicka confronted Alto and said that she could still fight. Lion alone was too big a burden for Alto, and who would finish the dragon then? Lion just looked at Magicka and Alta said that he understood everything. Then it was necessary to hold a strategic meeting. While the guys were holding a meeting, the dragon was prowling in search of them. The next moment Lion went out to the dragon and asked what he was looking for, calling him a blockhead and that he was great here. At that moment the dragon he ran straight at him and Lion realized that he had to distract attention from the dragon for just one minute while the young man prepared a trap. Hitting the tree, Lion said that he was not as fast as Magicka and would not be able to play with the dragon for a long time. But he has strength and endurance and in this he was the best, throwing a tree that had just been cut down directly at the dragon, to which he burned the tree right in his path and ran to Lion. The next moment, Lion turned to the master and asked if it was still a long time, to which Alto said that the preparation was almost complete and asked for a little more time. Lion tried to buy a little more time for Alto and threw a stone at the dragon. He dodged the stone at that moment fell into the trap of Alto, and Lion realized that he had succeeded and the dragon got caught. So the next moment he used the super hack to attack the dragon. At that moment Magicka shouted to Lion to was he faster or was he rushing towards her with all his might. Alto commanded everyone that the spell delayed the dragon only for 10 seconds more, they would not have a chance. And then Lion, planting Magicka, asked if the shorty was ready, because the girl asked if he was really telling her that. The next moment Lion threw Magicka very high up, shouting for the girl to go forward and using the twinkling star and the fist of dreams Magicka attacked the dragon, but he only managed to release the flame. Magicka said going down that she was very sorry, because the dragon was looking completely wrong. The dragon was not particularly smart, using these spells as bait, they were able to lure him to look up. Now you can aim at a weak spot and Lion had to do this, in which the guys believed. Using the Sword of Courage, Lion attacked the dragon and took off his head. The very next moment they defeated the dragon, and altogether rejoiced at their well-coordinated victory. Turning to the master, Lion said whether he could now call himself a dragon slayer, whether it was so and Alta said that it really was so the young man had an excellent blow. Lion, rejoicing, said that he finally got it, it sounds damn brave, he says. Magicka could not believe that Alto had entrusted Lion with the last blow, to which Lion absolutely did not expect Magicka to say so, did she really want to quarrel? The next moment Magicka said that, to be honest, she thought that this time he really tried with the young man, so she counted on Leon if something was needed. At this moment Lion, looking at the girl, did not understand if this one had just praised him and thought that the girl was definitely crazy. Our hero only silently I looked at the heroes, but at that moment they all felt dizzy and did not understand what it was. Magicka, sitting down from the pain, said that was it really dizziness for raising the level, and then our people understood that he had risen by as many as 8 levels on his system it meant that he was already at level 78. Lately he has almost failed to rise, even when he was killing demons. At that moment our hero hugged friends and those asked why it was so sudden. Alto noted that if they pass out so easily now, then the next morning they will wake up in the stomach of a monster. So they used a stone wall, and when they passed out, our hero asked Rue to look after them, to which Rue of course obeyed his master. Tonight the moon was somehow beautiful in a special way, so the guys passed out, and the next morning I wake up they didn't understand what was already in front of them, because it was terribly hot and something red was shining in front of their eyes. Opening his eyes, our hero saw a huge magic stone and it was the magic stone of the dragon. Turning to Rue, the young man asked if he really dragged him here. Rue, tired, said that it was so, and then praising him, our hero said that he even collected a magic stone. While remaining on guard, he was proud of him and hugged Rue. 
to which he was very happy. Magica, looking at our hero, said that the stone in front of him said that she had never seen such a healthy magic stone. Lion, looking at him, also asked if it was really a dragon stone. Looking at him together they thought about how beautiful it was, if not to show it, then they probably they will believe that they have defeated the dragon. Looking at the body behind him, the young man realized that in addition to this stone, they still had a lot of evidence. The next moment, taking out the blade, the young man began to cut the dragon's leg and Lion did not understand what the young man was doing, to which he said that he did not throw out the whole dragon here, for example. It was scales, if sewn into the fabric of clothes, you can make armor repulsive iron swords. From claws you can make the thinnest swords capable of to cut through steel, even a mantle sewn from leather. They say they are able to protect against the effects of magic and that this very rare metal was in front of the young man and that it was an eyeball, they give a pretty high price for it. Looking at how the young man was holding a huge eyeball, the guys were shocked the next moment. Our hero, flashing his eyes, said that he had found the rarest material, the dragon heart. At that moment Lion was fainting. Magicker reported, lifting the young man by the neck, the girl tried to revive Lion, to which the young man was very surprised that the guy couldn't stand it. Magica, looking at Alto, asked what the dragon's heart was for, and our hero explained that if you leave it for three years or so, it becomes a resurrecting medicine, and after learning about the resurrecting medicine, Magica said that she had heard about something similar, but did not know that it was made from dragon hearts, and then Lion said that unfortunately only people can come back to life. Having disassembled the dragon piece by piece, our hero reported that it was certainly enough to pay for the uniform. He thought that he would not have to worry about money for a while. The dragon lay disassembled in front of them and then turned to Magica. The young man asked them not to spend a lot of money. Magica agreed with him. The next moment our hero was thinking about how it was to take it with him and there were still suitable materials and it was a pity to leave them. At this moment Lion, who woke up, reported that it would be great to have such a skill as inventory. When he heard about the inventory and the young man was very surprised, then Lion reported that how could it be explained? But it looked like the young man was storing items in invisible cells. He probably saw something like that in games. And turning to Alto, Lion asked what our hero was saying. What is it it could not be? The ability to store an infinite number of things is beyond the limit of human abilities. The bag looks like it burned down, our hero thought. So he just had to take what they could carry and they would return. At that moment the slime turned to him and the young man asked what was wrong. At that moment the slime gave him his bag and then Alto understood how Rue pulled him out of his body. Then and the idea came to him that maybe Rue could move the dragon stone like that. Then Alto said that he thought it was impossible. But turning to Rue, he asked if he could accept so much material. Rue just opened his mouth and sucked in all the objects that were lying right in front of him. To which all our heroes were shocked, looking at it. The next moment, Lion said that the inventory does not exist, holding slime in his hands. And the young man thought that all this time Alto had been so carefully selecting the materials that he came across. But all his efforts were in vain. The young man said crying. At this moment, while our heroes were sitting and calming Alto, someone was watching them. And this girl was thinking that there were only three guys, and they killed a whole dragon, especially this boy. It looks like God was right after all. She couldn't wait to find out what the future would surprise. Coming to the guild, the young man said that everyone should listen to him carefully, because they said that they had defeated the dragon, as it was said in this request. Lion said turning to the guild that they could look at the materials and then the evaluator said that the material itself really seemed decent. But there are many ways to get it, for example at auctions. But the guys said that they could neither buy nor pay a reward, so they asked to take it back, to which Lion said that these were not goods for resale. Our hero was standing behind thinking that all these proofs were not enough. All of them were born with a destiny ordained by God. The power of fate is very strong. It is not easy to deviate from it. And even such a cognitive blockage as this can happen for actions deviating from their fate, such as the magic of this world. Alto, addressing Lion, said that he was sorry, but they had to give up, which Lion did not understand at all why because they really were the winners of the dragon. But these people in the guild did not believe them and then the hero said that their goal was to earn money for a uniform. They would sell materials in another way on what Lion said was that it was the right thing to do. But he didn't agree. The next moment someone addressing them said that they were very noisy. Then seeing the girl, Alto was very surprised and the girl said that even if quarrels are the main decoration of the guild, it's a bit too much, did the guys know about it? Then they asked who the girl in front of them was in introducing herself. The girl said that she was Citri Justice, the next head of the Duchy of Justice. Lion said that he did not know what the stranger was talking about, 
but asked not to interfere in their conversation, to which the girl said that he asked what her name was, so she answered and asked what kind of barbarian adventurers they were, to which Lion tried to restrain himself, but asked what the girl said and our hero asked if he would calm down. Looking at the girl and repeating her name to himself, the young man thought that it was an official of the judicial body of the country of the Council of True and False, one of the twelve generals of Euphonia. What was she doing here? Our hero thought. At this moment, the girl, looking at the items that were lying in front of the appraisers and taking one of them, said that it was spinal fluid and that it was still fresh. This is proof that this material was only a few days after killing the dragon. At least it was not resold and at least asked the guys to buy these materials and if Mrs. Citri insists. Then they agreed. The next moment, the girl approached our hero and leaning towards him said that she could not believe that the young man became a dragon slayer at such a young age. I can't wait to find out what else saved the future, which the young man sweating just looked at the girl next to him. The next moment they were leaving the guild and the happy lion was carrying 150 gold coins with him and saying that he had never seen such a lot of money before, which Magica said they could not spend it on. Our hero was walking only behind them and thinking about Citri, and why did she talk to him and not with Magica and with Lion? Did she really find out about his plan? Our hero thought, because he spent more than 10 years planning an operation to rescue Hannah. He had a choice of a hotel, here he had already done some of this, if he knew that this would be the case, should he have changed the plan? Then the hero thought that he had decided that he would not do it. If he did it then it would be a bluff. There was nothing left but to act as it is and everything was fine. So far everything was fine and our hero calmed himself down. The next moment Citri was fighting in the courtyard, together with her opponent, and then defeating him. A footman approached her, asking the lady to stop, and said that Mrs. Citri had won and that the girl was more active than usual. Did something happen in the city, to which she said, that she thought she had found his little man and said that God's words were really true. It was worth sending a request for the extermination of dragons. The state tries to kill dragons at any cost. It is absolutely beyond the power of a person. It is very unlikely. But if someone deviates from the fate ordained by God, if someone appears and kills a dragon, it is this little man who will lead the world to disaster, a new source of danger. She was not absolutely sure of it. But she did not she missed him when her eyes met the eyes of that boy's fighting spirit flashed by. She thought, remembering Alto. Citri thought that if he had not passed the path of the righteous, he would never have shown it. The next moment, she destroyed the attack of the opponents in front of her and asked Lord Fortimus to watch. She wanted to show who the young man really was. The sun was shining and all our heroes came to school to see about the new set, which was announced at that moment. Lion, looking, tried to find out his name and he found, the young man was enrolled in class C also. Next to this, the scores on the exam were shown and the young man thought about why they were no longer distributed by grades according to the grades. Was this true? Then why was in the second grade from the bottom? Magica reported that perhaps the young man's scores for the written exam were catastrophically small. Then he decided to ask what class Magica was already in, where she got to. To which Magica said that she got into class A, and she was also a scholarship student, which Lion could not believe his ears, and Alto congratulated the girl from the bottom of his heart souls, to which the girl asked, wasn't the young man also in class our hero reported that he was in class D, to which the guys were completely surprised. Then Lion, lying on the floor, shouted that the young man had been preparing for so long, but entered a class below him. Maybe he was in the wrong places, rode off at that moment Magica said that Lion was an idiot. It was impossible being so rude and hitting him. Our hero reported that he was from a peasant family with the first standard of living. No matter how good his results were higher than class D, he did not shine. Besides, school life was not important for him. He informed the young man, so he did not care about everything that was happening to him. Everything was fine with him. On that our heroes were very surprised by what the young man was saying. The next moment they came to school and were already saying goodbye, going to their classes. Our hero hoped that both would fit into the school and approached his class, where he thought that his problems started from here. If he remembered everything correctly, that when he opened these doors, then right at him should water was falling. The guy who practiced said that he practiced water magic and ruined everything. But it wasn't on purpose and asked if our hero would forgive him, referring to him to the garbage of poor peasants. Alto recalled the mockery of the upper classes over the lower classes and everything was clear to him. So he wished him success with practice and everything was exactly the same as then. To which the guys looking at our hero did not understand why he was not wet. 
then again taking control of magic. The other guy said that his friend was not very good at controlling magic. It was his turn, so he attacked our hero. But he used magic against their magic and was able to stay dry. To which the young man who attacked did not understand how our hero could just repel his spell. Alto, sitting and opening her bag, thought that in his past life it looked like a great sorcery. To which his attackers did not understand what it meant. Because the young man must have had a good magic armor, he definitely stole it from somewhere. They thought and thought that they would need to return it all the time, using fire magic. The young man said that it was a little dangerous spell, but if our hero was wearing armor then it was nothing terrible. Looking at his opponents, our hero thought to himself that they treated him like a thief. By the way, was he really so crazy that he would use attacking magic right in the audience? Okay. His papers still can't be strong. Our hero thought at that moment in class who then the guy came in and used a fireball. At that moment Alto jumped up and was able to prevent an attack that could hit the girl. Our hero jumped up and hit the wall so quickly that he scared the attacker and said that even if it was just practice, it was dangerous to use attacking spells in class. But what if someone gets hurt and next time he asked his opponent to be more attentive, to which the young man did not understand who was in front of him there was. Attacking. At this moment a girl entering the classroom asked what was going on at all. Then our hero, who was afraid to turn around, thought that he had been waiting for this meeting for a very long time and turning around. He saw Hannah standing right in front of him and approaching the girl. He said that someone was just practicing witchcraft, so he asked not to pay attention. Everything was fine. The young man with tears in his eyes thought about what he had to endure, because it was impossible to get involved with a girl because he had only five years left in this life. If they love each other again as before, then this time he would have to leave her alone and let them remain strangers rather than he will force her to endure such pain, because Hannah's death is four months away. Leaving the classroom, the young man said that everything was fine to himself, mentally turning to Hannah and that he would definitely protect her. When Hannah saw the guy, she couldn't believe her eyes. It was a real miracle for Hannah Colonel to get into this school. Colonel is a venerable and senior noble family in the kingdom of Euphonia. The girl was born the heiress of this family. Great hopes were pinned on her. Her parents gave her one of the best mentors in the world, but she could not do anything else. The mentor explained to his parents that he would never have met a person who did not have talent. The girl only silently watched the conversation from behind the doors, and then she mentor explained that talent is an integral part of human development. In other words, giftedness, and the standard of living was undoubtedly for for the girl. But at this level nothing could be built on an excellent foundation. The mentor was afraid to upset, but their daughter was without talent. Since then, ten years have passed, as that mentor said, the girl always failed, so that she did not do anything, did not rise, even by one level, everyone refused her, even her father, remembering her life, the girl fought. But she was able to enroll in this school due to the political considerations of the school, and it was impossible to allow her incompetence to become known and tarnish the name of the colonel family. The girl thought that she should be as inconspicuous as possible, not take a single breath so that she would not be seen and not express her opinion so that no one would know. She had to erase her existence so that no one would make fun of her, just stay alone. But when she entered the classroom, she felt that her life had changed. At that moment she remembered a conversation with her mother, asking about what her intended was, to which her mother said that she did not know this, but when the girl met, she would immediately understand. Because she was such a fate and seeing our hero, the girl she realized that Alto was her betrothed. Our hero was training with a sword and then the teacher told the guys to swing their weapons as if they were really fighting demons. You can't swing at corners, that's the whole point of practicing martial arts. The teacher will exclude everyone who relates to studying. He was not serious. At this moment, when our hero was brandishing a dagger, the teacher decided to attack him and then, dodging him. Alto asked why the teacher did it so abruptly, to which he asked to give him his weapon, because it was too early for him to go like that. The young man had a dragon fang dagger made from dragon teeth. This is a rare precious weapon. The teacher asked where he got this dagger from. Alto thought to himself that he had made it himself by killing the dragon. But if he said that, it would definitely be taken for nonsense. And then the teacher said that the young man would never get better if he relied on weapons. The teacher would hold this dagger until the young man's level increased. So he asked give it to him quickly. The guys said that if Levante's teacher was an adventurer of class A aimed at him, then the young man was finished. Our hero stood silently and waited for something to happen. At this moment the teacher attacking him said that the young man reacts for a long time. Because he does not like it so much that he should give it to the teacher, 
He asked at this moment. Our hero was dodging and trying not to lose. The young man understood that the teacher was really a class. Did the teacher say to Alto that he was a peasant and was able to dodge his attacks? Probably he must have been very lucky and said that then they would do so. Play tag. After hearing about tag, our hero fought. Then the teacher said that if by the end of the lesson, he will never touch it. Then the young man will be able to keep the dagger for himself. Well, our hero did not understand. Did the teacher really want this dagger so much? The teacher can't just pass like that. Warming up. The teacher said that if the young man refused, then Levandi would consider it a defeat. The teacher would not give any concessions. Even if the young man was a peasant and they had to start their game, trying to attack our hero, the teacher shouted. The hero saw the teacher rushing towards him and trying to evade his attacks, despite his size and the teacher was very fast. But compared to Magica, he was not so scary, and the young man fought. The teacher thought to himself how the young man could dodge any of his blows and thought that the guy was just lucky. The next moment Levandi used magic, which our hero did not expect, and it was air magic and then attacking Alto. The teacher thought that the young man got caught. But hitting the wall I couldn't believe it, because the young man had just been here. Our hero, standing already behind the teacher, thought that he had barely escaped. The teacher was seriously using attacking magic and spots. At that moment everyone was rooting for the teacher and asked him to continue in the same spirit. And Hannah just looked at our hero, and was silent, waiting for what would happen next. Dodging the teacher's attacks, our hero did not understand, was he really so determined? There was no way out. Alto did not want to use this here, but used a reduction in distance. The next moment he was already shuffling from place to tree and thinking that he had recently mastered this technique, and that it allows him to overcome small distances in the fastest possible time. The teacher could not understand in any way why he could not catch Alto, Levandi would lose at such a pace. The next moment our hero was already sitting on a tree, and the teacher asked if the young man really thought he could get away with it and offered to look at his hem. Was he really so fast that he didn't even notice how the clothes were torn? Levandi said that the victory was for him. At that moment the young man, seeing his torn clothes, thought that he was watching every movement carefully, and the teacher definitely did not touch him. This is the wind, the magic of the wind and the teacher knew that Alto would not make false accusations, to which one of the guys began to say that he saw the teacher touch the guy. The other agreed, and Hannah stood next to him and thought that these guys were lying. Because the human eye is not able to distinguish anything on such a speed, the young man thought that it was his business that was bad, because it's not at the level of distance or something like that. At that moment, holding out his hand, the teacher said that the young man should give him the dragon's fang and promised. At that moment someone shouted that everyone should wait. Because the teacher did not touch Alto with a finger, it was Magica. And she said that she was watching the game carefully. At that moment, the young man, descending from the tree, asked what Magica was doing here. To which Magica reported that she was just passing by by chance and what was much more important. Was the man really a teacher? Turning to teacher Levanti, Magica asked. The teacher, looking at the girl, thought that it was a risk factor. Magica estate terror, Levandi was afraid that if he argued with her, he would get into trouble. So he said that it should be so, turning to Magica. He said that since the girl was an animal with special vision with them. At that moment Levandi was telling the young man to remember, even if it's just a game and if Alto loses, problems may arise. And this is thanks to the girl, then the teacher suggested starting all over again. At that moment, he used a wind cutter and said that's why Levandi was in a level adventurer. This is an advanced technique that puts magic in their hands, turns them into weapons and asked our hero to try to dodge this. If at all, the next moment he attacked Alto and thought that the young man got caught. This magic not only increases the strike range, it also throws wind blades around the opponent. Looking at this, Levandi thought that it was just a Christian. If he dies, then it can be easily interpreted as an accident in training and then he told his attack to cut Alto. The young man just concentrated and thought that these winds of ours were really sharp, as fast as possible. He would not receive a single blow from such a level of magic. The next moment, our hero dodged all the pedals, to which the teacher thought to himself that this could not be and was surprised, because the young man was a weakling with the first level of life, but Levani thought that there was something wrong here. Is there really someone who can refute the standard of living and thought about I think it was probably just an accident. It just so happened that Levani felt bad today, the teacher justified himself to himself. The next moment, grabbing his sword, Levani thought that this question would not leave him like the teacher of this school. He could not afford to lose to the young man and therefore ran straight at him with a sword. Our hero could not believe that the teacher grabbed the sword and thought that he was certainly hopeless, and the lesson is almost over, if Alto can dodge this attack, then he will win. 
At this moment, the guys asked him how he could avoid all these attacks. Probably he has some kind of trick. They thought and said that he played honestly like a man and held our hero by the legs, so they offered to attack the teacher right now while they hold the guy by the legs on both sides, what our hero did not expect it at all. Standing and realizing that the teacher was right in front of him, everyone was laughing and only Hannah was thinking, is the teacher going to kill the student now? The teacher thought that a small fry with the first level of life is the one who Lev Andy can take his life with one easy blow. The teacher could not lose to someone like Alto, and the attack of our hero offered him to die. There were only a few seconds left until the end of the lesson and our hero used hacking. The next moment the sword flew out of the teacher's hands and he did not understand how the sword could fly away by itself, and at that moment Alto used a reduction in distance, and the young man was already in another place, along with the guys who held his legs. After that, our hero used the grave and argolization. At that moment the teacher lost to our hero. The young man said that blinded by greed and self-love, he was an unfit teacher and dropped the ball right next to him. At that moment the seconds went out and the clock showed the end of the lesson. Alto won. The guys who held our hero by the legs could not believe that the teacher had lost. Then our hero said that the lesson was over and asked them to let him go. At that moment the stunned guys took their hands off our hero's feet. After the lesson, all the students discussed Levante's teacher and said that he was very cool, and that they would never be able to repeat his movements. The next moment they thought about whether they could ever become as cool as their teacher. Our hero walked behind all the students and thought that really no one remembered him at all. He recalled the power of magic that was imposed on this world at that moment Magica ran up to our hero and hit the young man. Alto did not understand why Magica said that the young man was too inattentive, because he was so easily confused by a stab in the back. As punishment he would have to attend her training after school. Hearing this our hero was depressed and said that today he planned to improve his blacksmithing skills. The next moment, he said that he had not lost his dagger and suggested that Magica not pay attention to it. But Magica said that this was not the case. Hannah was standing behind them and only silently watched the guys. Then at sunset she already went to train alone. While Hannah was training, she was occupied with thoughts about why no one praised Alto. Of course the teacher was also good. But did it really seem to her alone that Alto was superior to him? People didn't notice. But he sometimes even closed his eyes during attacks and she didn't know how he could do it if he only had one standard of living. Hannah was thinking that she had a level 4 and she would never be able to imitate this young man and thought that she didn't have talent. At that moment she was shaking her head off all these bad thoughts and it would be impossible to replace the gift in everything. Alto probably trained very hard. Clutching the sword in her hands, the girl thought, so she decided that she, too, could achieve something if she tried. The next moment dropping the sword from her hands, she thought that it hurt her. All her hands were bruised, and tears welled up in her eyes and the girl wanted to become stronger, not for someone, but for myself. At that moment, Alto came into the training hall and ran into Hannah, so he apologized, saying that he did not notice any busy marks, so he thought the hall was free. At that moment Hannah asked him to wait, and then said that they could have a little chat with Alto. The young man pretended that at first he did not hear her request, but then as she said it, he silently only looked at the door in front of him. The girl, sitting on the floor, addressed Alto and introduced herself as Hannah Colonel, saying that Alto was very amazing and that no ordinary student could evade Levante's teacher. The girl was wondering how Alto could become so strong. At that moment our hero was standing at the door and trying to hold on, because he had five years left. If he gets closer to Hannah now, he will make her sad in the future, our hero thought, because he decided that he would just keep an eye on the girl. The next moment, without turning to Hannah, Alto said that all this was due to numerous trainings and at that very moment the girl grabbed his hand without expecting it. Both were very embarrassed and then taking her hand away, and turning away. Hannah said that she very brazenly grabbed Alto's hand and asked for forgiveness. Your girl was embarrassed to think that she was holding Alto's hand. Our hero, looking at Hannah and smiling, thought that she was exactly the same as she was then and then interrupting his thoughts. Hannah asked him to listen to her, because if it wasn't difficult for him, she asked if the young man could train with her, because no matter how hard she tried, she still didn't achieve any success, and under the guidance of excellent teachers, she could not achieve any progress and constantly dropped out. But turning to the young man, she said that if he taught her, she felt that everything would work out for her and apologized that he had finished so unexpectedly. The next moment our hero listened attentively to her, and the girl said that she probably caused discomfort. At that moment he drew attention to her hands, which were completely wounded and thought that now the opportunity to communicate with her had disappeared. He did not know what was best for him to do, 
but he could not in any way to refuse at the request of such a hardworking and beloved person from a past life. The next moment, Alto said that if the girl wanted, then he could help her as much as he wanted and put all his strength, extending his hand to Hannah. Beaming, thanked Alto and so they shook hands. The girl said that she would do everything in her power. Our hero smiled and said that it was necessary great, and they will all try. At that moment, the guys said that they had heard everything, to which the confused Hannah was very surprised. Lyon was standing in front of her and talking about friends of friends being friends too. And a girl was looking out from behind Lyon and Lyon was saying that this operation was called 100 Friends. Holding out his hand to Hannah, it was very nice to meet him. The young man introduced himself as Lyon and asked if he could just call her Hannah. The girl confusedly said that he could just call her Hannah. Then Alto, seeing Lyon, asked about what friends, friends he also said, because really they were friends with Lyon at all, and at that moment the young man was very offended and Alto had to calm him down. At that moment Magica introduced herself to the girl as Magica Estate Terror, and said that she could just call her Magica. They they shook hands. Hannah noticed that the girl's name consists of three parts and asked if the girl was from the royal family. She replied that it would be so, or rather she wanted to say that Magica was from the former royal family. Because the squirrel family has lost its strength, there is no greater strength in the royal blood. Lion and Alto listened very attentively to Magica. At that moment Lion asked her to stop and asked why he did not know that Magica was from the royal family. The girl looked at him and said that it was obvious because she did not talk about it and Lion shouted at her, saying that if she was really lucky to be born into the royal family, then his rare talents of a hero fade against the background of a girl. Looking at Magica, the young man said that it turns out that the girl was quiet and how can such a small creature be a royal person? The next moment they started fighting as usual, and Alto and Hannah looked at it from the side. Looking at Alto, Hannah asked if it was necessary to stop them, to which Alto said that Lion was unusually strong, so he would be fine. At first he could not kill a single demon but now he was strong enough to fight Magica, so he told Alto that the girl would succeed, she would definitely become stronger. A few days later, not far from Euphonia, the guys immediately went to the forest to train and at that moment Alto introduced Hannah together with Slime. They all overcame obstacles and difficulties together. At some moments, Alto helped Hannah and asked if the girl was okay, to which she said that it was so then Magica was interested in what kind of standard of living Hana had and the girl said that she was four, but that she had no talent, so she could not develop any of the skills above than one level. Hearing this, Magica and Lion turned to the guys and asked if Hannah was joking. How could there not be a natural talent? And the girl apologized with tears in her eyes. Then Alto told Lion to choose his words better. Lion said that it was great, to which the guys were completely surprised. Then Lion explained that he said that a gift is like a talent that is necessary for the development of abilities. But this did not mean that it was possible to develop only in such a way as if they were tied to a certain lifestyle. And the absence of this means that they could not choose their own lifestyle. Was it not great? At that moment our hero had an idea because Lion was right. Magenka heard about it for the first time, to talk about the lack of talent in this way, and Alto said that it was such a good idea that he could not believe that she came out of Lion. Magica said that she thought that the young man was just an idiot. Everyone at that moment was looking at Lion at what he he asked why they had such a bad opinion of him. The next moment they came to the lake and thought that there was a good place here, then Hannah was interested in what kind of training would be because they were in the forest, so she could train on trees, to which the young man said that this training was in real conditions. From now on Hannah would fight with real monsters. Hearing this the girl was very surprised. Hannah looked at Alto and said that she couldn't do it, because she wouldn't just suddenly take and kill a monster. She had level 1 and did the young man remember about it. Hannah reminded him at that moment all three of them, including Alto, were looking at the girl. Hannah reported that she would not be able to defeat monsters without experience, to which he was our hero, taking something out of his bag, saying that everything was fine, because he would not allow anyone to hurt her. At that moment, goblins appeared in front of them and then Lion said that the master was too cruel to the girl. Magica then explained that the young man did not need to lure so many goblins. Alto said that he had an idea. Turning to his friends, he told them to give him their ears and whisper something to them. Then the guys understood everything and the plan was worthy of a master, Lion replied. Both were inspired and ready for battle. The next moment Alto gave the sword to Hannah and said that they were ready and could start. But Hannah said that she was not ready yet. The next moment the young man said that he was counting on the guys and they all moved to attack. 
Magicka dodged goblins and thought that killing them one by one was a waste of time, so she jumped up and attacked monsters, because for such monsters it would be enough. So Magicka said all the times and the next moment our hero used a bright stone and also attacked goblins. Hannah, watching all this, was amazed at how strong the guys were. At that moment a goblin ran out of the bushes at her and the girl thought that she was completely unprepared for this. She was immediately protected by Alto and using a reduction in distance, because he thought that he would not let them finger touch Hannah. Putting the goblin down and addressing the girl, Alto asked Hannah if she was hurt, and she said that Hannah was fine. Then the young men realized that it was time. At that moment, Lion was captured by goblins and Lion shouted that he had lost his vigilance and that now they would kill him. The girl saw how Lion was lying under a pile of goblins and asked for help. The next moment, Hannah turned to Alto and said that Lion was in trouble, to which the young man, waving off the goblin, apologized, because he was a little busy and sat down to Hannah to save him, to which the girl heard this and said that she could not. But the young man said that everything was fine. The monsters were watching only at Lion and that the girl could hit from behind, but that Hannah was very unsure of herself, but our hero believed that so far everything was going according to plan. The young man's plan was that Lion had a good skill to distract attention, exceptional physical abilities, and also immortality, and thanks to this, Lion can remain a target of goblins for a long time. In such a situation even Hannah should be able to cope with them alone, she and Magicka can cope with the rest. But the main thing is whether they have enough Hannah has the courage to defeat monsters or not. At that moment, Hannah, holding her sword with shaking hands, thought that she was very scared. But if it wasn't her, then who else and she decided to remember everything she was taught and so she attacked the goblin from behind. Injuring one, tears came to her eyes. Magicka thought that the wound was too small to be fatal, but Hannah's psychological damage was probably even greater, she thought. At that moment our hero was looking at Hannah, and the girl was very scared. So her friend was attacked right before her eyes and she blamed herself for being scared with a similar situation. I was thinking about why she was so weak. At that moment our hero called her and said that she could because he was confident in her. Clutching the sword tightly, Hannah cheered up and thought that she wanted to become stronger. If Alto was next to her, then she would have the courage to be strong. Looking at the young man and attacking the goblin and the girl fought. The next moment, Hannah was already running at the goblins, waving her sword and striking with all her strength. Because she thought to herself that there could be no more whining, she decided to become strong and therefore beat forward and only forward. The next moment one of the goblins shot an arrow straight into Hannah's back, which Magicka caught her on and she asked the goblin not to interfere by shooting an arrow back at him. Hannah attacked the goblins again and after cutting one in half, she thought about what she could. The next moment the girl fainted almost, and catching her Alto asked if she was okay, then she apologized to Alto, because she just felt dizzy. A young man reported that it was due to the fact that her level had risen and hearing this, Hannah was overjoyed, thinking that really her level had risen and then the girl burst into tears right in front of Alto. Crying on his shoulder, she thought that she had been waiting for this moment for all her 15 years, but then they were interrupted by Lion, who asked how long he had to lie like that. Because the goblin and were still on top of him, our hero said that he had completely forgotten about Lion. And Hannah asked, how could Lion be so calm? Lion, bleeding and captured by goblins, said that he was quite brave and such monsters would not harm him. Then Alto reported that it was a plan to make Hannah be brave, addressing the girl he said and after hearing this she understood everything. So she let the young man go. And our hero said that it was necessary take a break until Hannah calms down, to which the girl said that she was fine, she was ready to continue, the young man smiled and looked at her and agreed with it. But to begin with, calling his slime by the name of Rue, the young man asked him to give him the sword and then Alto offered Hannah to use this very sword. It was a dragon bone sword. Seeing the sword in front of him, the young man reported that the sword was made of dragon bone and he made it for Hannah to use her blacksmithing skills. Taking the sword in her hands and Hannah thought that it was a very beautiful sword and then behind her the goblins were already ready to attack the girl. Snatching the sword from the scabbard, she attacked them. Seeing that she had dealt with the goblins, she did not understand what was with this weapon. How could such an attack be made easy with a wave of her hand and said that she could not use this amazing sword, pointing at the sword in front of her. Alto reported that he believed that the tool in the hands of a person teaches him. This sword makes the girl stronger, was sure that now she could become stronger and offered Hannah to believe in herself. Then Hannah grabbed the MNCH tighter said that she agrees with the words of the young man. At this moment Magicka and Lion only smiling they looked at the girl. Alto reported that then they would continue to raise her levels for some time. 
Gradually, they would increase the number of opponents. Watching Hannah's progress, in the next few moments Hannah was fighting goblins and they thought that they had killed all the goblins. Then Alto ran up to Hannah saying that she had done a good job, asking if the girl was hurt. Alto was wondering what level Hannah had now, and checking the level, she asked Alto to look and then Alt saw that the girl's talent showed up. Her level was 31, and the talent was called as the germ of a hero, to which our hero, after reading this, was very surprised by such talent. Hannah, looking at the viola, said that her level had manifested itself, and the young man approaching Hannah, seeing her talent, which was called as the germ of a hero, asked Lyon if he had ever seen such a thing, to which the young man, addressing Alto, said, and whether he had ever heard of such a thing or seen. At that moment Magica was standing behind them and hearing about the hero's germs, she realized that Hannah was exactly who she had been looking for all this time. In the world of fortune, there are six gods. Largo, the god of war, diatonic, the goddess of life and birth, Zemades, was a craft. Nisis, controls the soul and fate. Fortimus, the god of justice and order and the main god of the squirrel tribe. Amano Iloha, the lord of nature. Magica was the princess of the squirrel tribe. She was born as a result of the divination of Amon Iloha. Together with the hero, she will transform this world, he said, and Magica needed to find the owner of the hero's gift and become his right hand. That was her mission. Seven years after meeting and working together with Alto, she finally found a hero. The only reason Hannah is still a fetus is probably the work of the god Fortimus, the Cull Fortimus, which has the largest number of followers in the world, boasts tremendous power. The kingdom of Euphonia, where they were now, is under his control. In the name of justice and order, under this loud word, Fortimus continued to destroy everyone who displeased him, and Hannah's talent, capable of changing the world, was hidden all this time, most likely due to the fact that he could become a problem for Fortimus. Looking at Hannah, Magica understood that Alto had broken this seal. Following him was the right decision, she thought. Looking at the young man, now they just had to see if they could develop Hannah's talent. The next moment, someone called Magica and it was our hero, asked that the girl seemed to be thinking deeply about whether she had any ideas, to which Magica replied that there was nothing wrong with that. Magica thought to herself that if she told about Hannah about the hero now, it only weighed her down. It was still too early. At that moment Hannah was turning, apologizing and saying that morning had come and maybe they would return home. She was also worried, but she thought the butler was already worried about her after hearing this alto he said that it was true. The girl had already raised her level more than enough. The next moment Hannah turned to alto and said that she had another request. The young man was wondering what the girl wanted to ask him about, and then, embarrassed, Hannah asked if they could go to her house together, to which the young man said that it was necessary to explain why she returned so late. Our hero recalled how he came to Hannah's house after training in his previous life, then he injured the girl, and the butler was very angry and then the young man thought that he really needed to go together, turning to Magica and Lyon. Our hero asked them to first go to the guild and sell large stones. Coming to the house, Hannah and the young man looked at him, and the young man thought that the house was so beautiful that he would never get tired of looking at it. Hannah looking at the young man asked if he was surprised, because the first head of the Colonel family was one of the founders of the Kingdom of Euphonia, and the doors were opened to the guys and they they entered the mansion. Moving through the corridor, in which there were many portraits, Hannah talked about her family. All subsequent family members were outstanding and played many important roles in the life of the country. Then our hero, looking at the girl, asked if she would follow in their footsteps and the girl answered positively, so her lack of talent was a huge problem. The young man just kept silent. The next moment they came into the room and Hannah asked if Alto could wait there is not much here, which he agreed to sitting down on the sofa. At this moment Hannah went into the room and our hero said that the butler could go out. Appearing in front of the young man out of nowhere, the butler was surprised that the young man noticed him and introduced himself, saying that his name was Klein. He was the head butler of the Colonel house and made some inquiries about the young man, saying that whether his guesses were correct, that the guy's name was Mr. Alto. Alto, looking at the butler, said that since he was here and that he was hiding here, it means he wanted to talk to him alone. Then the butler said that the young man was very perceptive and asked to let him get right to the point, asking for what purpose the young man came to Hannah. Because there was still about 30 students, Klein would like the young man to tell him why he chose Lady Hannah. Our hero thought to himself that it was not a secret that Colonel was the highest nobility. If Alto said that it was a coincidence, then the butler would not believe, because he was a peasant. So Alto said that it seemed to him that he and Lady Hannah, who has no talent, understand each other, 
Javi had one standard of living and he knew what it was like to be a beggar, our hero explained. The next moment looking directly at the butler, Klein only replied that he and Hannah had a similar situation and said that it must be hard for the young man. In fact, he noticed that Lady Hannah began to smile much more often lately and it seemed that it was thanks to Mr. Alto. Then the butler thanked our hero and decided to ask him the last question, pouring tea. The butler asked what kind of relationship the young man wanted to think about with Miss Hannah in the future. After hearing this question and putting a cup in front of him, our hero recalled his past and replied that he hoped they could become best friends. The butler just kept silent, and then turning to the boy and throwing off the mug of the table said that this it couldn't be. The young man was only a peasant and the next moment the butler was holding a knife near the throat of our hero. Holding a knife near the throat of our hero, the butler said that his desire to be friends with a nobleman was outrageous, never again asked not to get involved with Lady Hannah. Our hero thought to himself that the butler's attitude had suddenly changed. It was so unnatural. Because he had just been so friendly to him, it was probably like last time. Alto wounded Hannah and Klein was furious. Something invisible controlled his emotions and fed to make him angry from Hannah and tried to make him experience the same fate as in his previous life. Such is the power of Fortimus magic over this world and if the young man is silent, then the same thing will happen again as then. He had to change his fate, looking at the butler, our hero thought. Jumping back from the chair where Alto was sitting, the young man asked the butler why it was impossible to contact Hannah. To which the butler replied, Can the young man imagine a lady is considered unworthy if she communicates with Christians, especially if he has a lower standard of living? The first one who can still be smarter than him, to which our hero thought that it was the butler who had lost his dignity. After all, during their training, Hannah became stronger, perhaps she will be among the best of the D-class, and what could Klein have done for her over these 15 years? To which the butler said that this could not be and the young man said that it was true, because all this time Hannah was at level 1 and he did not try to change anything and just looked after her. Isn't this a lack of dignity? The young man said, taking out the knife from the butler and saying that like those who are hiding behind stealth skills are now five butlers in this room. Holding all the butler's knives in their hand, our hero said, and it looks like he was the most powerful among them, but since he could catch them so easily, it means they are not so good. Looking at the young man who held five knives in his hand, Klein thought, when did he have time if, if everything got out of control, how would he stop him? Our hero asked if his dignity of nobility would stop Klein. The young man asked, seeing this, the butler said that for what purpose was it all? At that moment, the door was opening and Hannah apologetically asked to forgive her for making her wait, and she would show the young man the palace. At that moment she saw Klein and asked why he was here. The young man smiled and said that the butler treated him as if he was her friend, to which the butler said that they knew each other, Lady Hannah, so it was quite natural and the young man said that he hoped they would see each other soon. The butler bowing to our hero said that he was also on this is hopeful. The next moment the guys left the room and continued to move around the palace. The young man walked behind Hannah and thought that if he had gone that far, he could have been convicted of causing harm, but this was the only way to make them feel threatened, because in their previous life they were killed by Samijan who suddenly appeared out of nowhere and could not be resisted if they had prepared to defend themselves. Hannah and everything could have been different, they were the only ones who could have survived this tragedy, our hero thought. The next moment, Hannah turned to Alto and tried to call him. The young man looking at her said that he was thinking, apologize. Then opening the door to the room, the girl said that it was unusual for her to see the young man distracted. The next moment they went into her room which was illuminated by light, there were neat things everywhere and the young man entering I thought he was in it for the first time, because in his previous life he didn't even go further than the living room. Was there really Hannah's bedroom here? The girl, looking at the young man, reported that her bedroom was here. After hearing this, our hero was very surprised. Then the girl said that it was customary among the nobility to invite close friends to their bedroom and she wanted to thank the young man properly. Turning to Alto, Hannah said that she was very grateful to him. The young man said that the fact that the girl became stronger was her merit. He just helped, to which Hannah was embarrassed to say that she thought that Alto would say exactly that. The girl said that if Alto didn't mind, could they? And without finishing, the young man realized that it was bad. In a previous life, Hannah also one confessed her love and offered to meet, but now it was impossible to allow this. If he accepted her confession, he would swear his life for her. They they will dream of a happy future and with such an attitude, the tragedy will repeat itself again and the young man thought that he would have to give up for Hannah. Then Hannah, embarrassed, asked if he would be her best friend and asked the young man to become one. 
Hearing this, our hero did not expect that her question would be exactly like that, and the blushing Hannah stood in front of our hero waiting for an answer. Falling on his knees in front of Hannah, the young man blushed and thought that how could he have thought that the girl was going to confess to him? What was he thinking about at all and was a little upset? But that when the girl saw Alto, she asked how he was our hero, I would sit down that it was even better and shake hands Hannah. He said that he would certainly be happy to be her friend. Smiling Hannah thanked the young man and said that she was glad. She thought to herself that she still could not say whether the young man would be her boyfriend. But it was not worth hurrying, she thought, because now she can spend a lot of time with the young man. The girl thought to herself, smiling. The next moment she saw off our hero and thanked him for today apologizing. Alto said that he stayed here for a long time and asked for forgiveness at this moment he drew attention to the sword that was standing next to the glass. Approaching the sword, the young man started to say something. But Hannah noticed that the young man's brother was very attentive. This sword is made of a very rare ore of ore chalcon. Hannah said and reported that the sword was made for the first head of the family. After the War of the Gods, seeing him, the young man understood that this is what ore chalcon is he saw it for the first time. The girl reported that it was a Carnell family heirloom, but no one has yet been able to arm themselves with it. Our hero was wondering why. It was so, because this sword doesn't look so heavy as if restrictions were imposed on it. And speaking about restrictions, Hannah said that after the sword was imposed restrictions to fight for everything important in this world, a more powerful force was invested in it. However, he the sword became unusable when the first head of the family took part in the foundation of the kingdom. Hearing this, our hero just looked at the sword and thought that probably because you can't fight for the important of other countries to protect your own. And yet turning to Alto, the girl asked if he wanted to have dinner with her for sure, our hero said that he was happy, but had to refuse, would it's not good if he's a peasant staying here all night and Hannah said that was the case. The young man, addressing Hannah, said that he was sorry to leave her, but offered to see her tomorrow at school. The next moment our hero told Hannah that they were best friends and from that day on and forever, our hero explained. As he left, he thought that tomorrow, which they want, would not come, so whatever happened, he wanted the girl to remember that in this world he was here when he left, and Hannah just looked after him, and the young man thought that Hannah's death was only seven hours away. Our hero was returning home and was greeted by the slime, so when he entered the house, the young man said that he was at home turning to Rue and asked if the goblins had sold magic stones. At that moment the slime threw out the coins that were in it. The young man looked at them and said that there were a lot of them. You will need to ask the guys to pour out coins to Hannah. Hearing this, the slime asked and was surprised. Our hero asked Rue to sit in the room of Lion or Magicy today. He has some things that one had to do and asked to send them greetings from him. At that moment Rue stretched his hands to the young man and he did not understand if the slime was against it. Rue climbed up to him and then our hero realized that the last days he didn't have much time to spend alone with Rue, so taking him in his arms. The guy smiled and held Rue in his arms. The next moment when Rue fell asleep, night came and our hero just looked out the window. The young man understood that very soon Samijin would appear on this road and would be heading to the house of the Colonel family. Our hero thought he would stop him here, so he chose this room. The next moment the young man called the skill table and wondered if Alto could defeat Samijin with such data if he could not resist again. In his previous life, the young man thought that it was impossible to be so weak. Now was not the time to think about losing. He risked everything for this day, and all that remained was to fight with all his might. The young man thought that he would win over Samijin. No matter what it cost him to avenge all that he had experienced in his previous life, that day it was not read over the capital, it was unclear whether it was a fire or a demon attack. Once on the roof the young man looked around and saw how near the royal the castle mansion was on fire it was the Colonel house. Everyone was killed in it and running up to the house the young man tried to understand what had happened and he was worried about only one question. Was Hannah okay? Running up to the house, the young man saw a stranger, and the butler stood in front of the stranger and protected Hannah and her mother. The man said that was why they understood everything now. At this moment Hannah Kernell would be dead by the will of the ruler, the man said holding his energy in his hand. Hannah Kernell will be dead by order of the king. Then the butler asked how it was possible and one of the twelve generals of Euphonia, Samijin Salway himself, would do it, because of the twelve generals of Euphonia there is a government. Besides they were a detachment working for the good of the country. That was the order and everything that Samijin did was completely legal didn't the butler think that a mere butler shouldn't have interfered. Standing and defending Hannah and her mother, the butler did not understand what the order meant. 
and Hannah's mother asked why the government was doing this to her daughter. Then turning to Lady Hannah, the butler said that yes, how could there be a decree on the murder of a 15-year-old girl? It was the same that he was the butler. If Samijin caused harm Lady Hannah, then he will not show mercy even to one of the 12 generals. At this moment when the butler tried to attack the man, his attack was repelled by just a finger of one hand. Samjin said that the butler was so determined, he thought that once in a lifetime the duchess's butler would be able to make him feel. But it seems that the butler disappointed him by burning a man, Samijin said. At that moment Hannah could not believe her eyes and shouted Klein's name, stretching out her hands to him. Our hero just watched from for the current situation. Samijin said that all this was useless, because even after killing the butler, he did not feel anything. The magician thought that he would feel if there was something more, turning to the girls and asking if they understood it. Hannah, turning to her mother, looked at her and her mother said that everything would be fine, because she would protect Hannah and hugging her daughter, said that she loved her sweet Hannah. Standing up for the girl, she said that the magician should stay away from the young girl. His goal was to destroy the dukes, which Samijin he said it wasn't like that. From now on, the Kernel family will be safe. The original plan was to exterminate the whole family but the owner of the house obeyed the king's order. Hannah's father refused Lady Hannah in accordance with the king's order. After hearing this, the mother said that this could not be and Hannah understood that her father had betrayed them. Samijin said that the real duke knew what was more important than this girl. He knew what was more important compared to his mother. He said that she was still the duke's wife. At that moment he pierced the woman through, saying that leaving his daughter in the name of the family was just stupidity. Hannah, looking at all this, sat and cried, because her mother had just been dead, to which Samijin said that the girl had a beautiful expression on her face. Maybe she was the same person as him, because God's will was important. But most of all Samijin wanted to know if people really exist and he asked if Hannah ever had the feeling that it only seems that people in this world besides her have their own will. But in fact they can be nothing more than an illusion and created by the magic of God. Samijin said that he conducted a variety of experiments, but he could not figure it out. So he thought that maybe the girl would tell him whether she was an illusion or a person. Then Hannah tearfully said that she was a person at that moment Samijin asked who allowed her to speak. After all, he was asking her soul, he said. Hannah was scared and then Samijin really liked what kind of face the girl was portraying and it seems he still began to understand something because of the girl. Attacking Hannah with wind swords and looking at her facial expression, he said that it was all fine because the girl was the best. At that moment our hero was coming out from his hiding place and asked to let Hannah go. Seeing the young man, Samijin turned around and then our hero realized that he could not move, to which Samijin said that it was such a good moment, because the young man could not think that he had the right to live, coming right up to our hero and looking at him point blank. Turning to Alto, Samijin said that the guy did not think that he had the right to life, because he was a little boy who somehow dared to interrupt his research and that he himself was asking for death. At that moment the magician thought that he would kill a young man, but then realized that Samijin could not just to kill anyone who was not connected with the Kernels and then turning to the hero, he said that they would do it differently. He had a great idea and the magician decided to conduct an experiment. The young man would be an observer and said that now he would kill Lady Hannah. Lady Hannah's pain will mix with the despair of the young man and then Samijin will be able to feel that there are people, and not just an illusion and thought that what a great idea it was and that Samijin was definitely a genius. At this moment our hero was silently stretching out his hand, trying to reach Hannah. Samijin said that it looked like the young man could not even scream, yet it was because of the standard of living. Because the standard of living is an immutable law of fortune, and this was the will of God and said that the young man should delve into it. Because he was born with too weak a life, and therefore he can only sit silently doing nothing, the magician said. Our hero thought to himself that he would stop and beg Samijin to stop. Then he brought down the entire flow of his power on Hannah and the girl was dead, and our hero only looked at it in tears and then Samijin said that the mission was completed. He was very sorry, because the magician did not feel anything at all the next moment he was throwing our hero away, and the guy was in tears thinking that he didn't save the girl, that he was such a weakling. After a while, Hannah's body was found under a watermill, in a stream on the outskirts of the city. There was a letter saying that the girl had no talent and she couldn't bear to see her disgrace her family's name. A note with a handwriting that was completely different from Hannah's, but was used as proof that she planned everything herself. Remembering this, our hero sat at the window and thought that he would not allow this to happen again, because there was an hour left before Hannah's death. The next moment someone in a raincoat appeared on the street and our hero jumped straight to him. Then Samijin asked who the young man was and Alto said that he was an Alto peasant with the first standard of living, just Alto. 
Hearing this Samijin was surprised, so the young man said that there was a twelve general in front of him Euphony. Mr. Samijin Salway, was it true? To which the magician said that if the young man knew this, then he could not have left, because he had a case. To which the young man said that he could not, because he was here to stop this stupidity. Samijin, hearing about stupidity, said that he was going to carry out the royal order. Since the young man said that he was going to stop him, then he would have to get rid of the young man. At that moment our hero felt the same as then. Samijin used submission on him, and our hero could not move. At that moment the magician attacked our hero with his staff, telling him to get out of his way and beat the young man, saying that how dare he interfere with him, because he had no idea what he was getting into. The young man only looked at Samijin and he did not understand what kind of look it was. A little more of him would be out of work, so he offered our hero to give up already, throwing our hero into the wall. Wiping sweat from his forehead, the magician thought that these were strange things, because it looks like he lost his temper. Thinking about how some kids were so stubborn, a little bump was all it took to make a mess. The next moment our hero appeared in front of Samijin holding his dragon bone dagger in his hand. When he saw this, he did not expect this at all. And then a change in the resistance of the difference appeared on our hero's table. A new life changed from one star to two. Note that the magician saw that the young man attacked him and then the magicians did not understand that some child with the first level of life would never be able to touch him with a finger. What was going on here at all? Our hero thought that during the week he trained with Magicka and Lion 4 level of life. He already adjusted. The level of the problem was with enemy spells, submission. But he expected that with the current level of experience, Alto would soon become resistant to it. As expected, this restriction was lifted after several attacks and our hero thought that while everything went according to plan. Moreover, he could not even think that his standard of living would change. Alto was able to change his level, something that would never change according to the laws of this world. So that's what the power of the creation talent thought our hero. Alto seems to have just woken up. Samijin, looking at the young man from the air, did not know what kind of trick it was and what the young man was doing. But Samijin decided to tell Alto that the result would not change from the fact that the young man was interfering with him. To which Alto said that it was absolutely not up to Samijin to decide and the magician understood that the young man was really confident in himself and he asked what such an insignificant guy like that could do by attacking the hero of his staff power. The young man, dodging, thought about how light his body was. The amount of mana release could not be compared to anything. Now he could cast any spells and told the magician that yes, he was such an insignificant magician, but he wanted to protect the people dear to him. Concentrated extra magic of fire, shooting torch, concentrating extra magic of ice, icicle coffin, concentrated extra magic of air, storm ascension and concentrated extra magic of water, hydraulic explosion. Samijin, looking at this, understood everything that the young man was using several advanced level spells at the same time. This was not a fight that could be won with bare hands, it was necessary to beat continuously. Samijin thought and did not understand that he was already opening the conversation with this, using a deadly flash of black ash against our hero, and he used everything against Samijin their spells. Looking at the attack, the young man understood that his four spells were equal to only one Samijin and it was really the best magician in the country, but not as good as the young man expected, because with such a level, depending on how the fight goes, Alto has every chance of winning. The next moment our hero used water balloons and steam turned out, and then Samijin realized that the young man wanted to blind him. The next moment our hero was already on the way to the enemy, and attacked him with a sword. But he did not succeed because Samijin glade everything and managed to deviate. Samjin said that it was an annoyance for the young man, because it was not so easy to defeat him. One of the twelve generals of Euphonia, our hero did not understand at all how the enemy was able to dodge, realizing that he was not only good at conjuring, but was also agile enough. But the next time the young man decided that he would not miss and decided to attack Samijin again. The magician understood that the guy was a small annoying fly and used a sensitive grid of highly concentrated mana. Within this area Samijin could detect the slightest movement of a person or a flow of mana, so he offered our hero to enter as soon as he touched this grid then he would be finished. Our hero was approaching the grid and then the magician thought that he was attacking him, but he understood that the grid did not take the young man and that the young man changed the trajectory. He did not feel any active magic. What was this guy doing at all? The next moment our hero hit the magician and he could not believe that it was so. The young man said that it was the end, but the next moment the magician was thanking the young man, talking about the lord. 
Looking at the top, our hero understood that a street lamp was falling directly on him and having managed to deviate from it. The magician said that he did not think that the young man would be happy if he thanked him. But still, what kind of trick was it that reflected Samijin's magic? Because the magician could not detect the activation of Alto. But this it was his magic, wasn't it? The magician said, addressing our hero. The young man thought to himself that this was a hack that he had installed in preparation for this battle. According to the plan, he used steam to disorient the magician and force him to be in one place. There was only one step left and it was not just an accident. If God really intervened, then Alto did not have there would have been chances from the very beginning. Our hero thought hard, and the magician understood that the young man did not answer him and thought that since he did not want to, then he did not really need it. Then using the oracle of the god Fortimus, the magician said that he ordered to get rid of the germ of the hero as soon as possible. But behind the appearance of such an obstacle there must be some that is. After hearing about the germ of the hero, Alto thought why Samijin knew about the talent that Hannah had today. Then Alto decided to ask the magician what he knew about the germ of the hero. Samijin said that the young man had a good reaction and asked if the guy had ever heard of the hero's talent because it was a rare gift that appears only once in 100 years. However, if you look into history, the gift always appears immediately before a major war. The hero's talent sounds very good, but this is the worst kind of talent that causes discord in the world by its very existence. So the god of Fortimus tries to get rid of the hero while he is still a fetus. Samijin was a trusted person. Now the guy understood how stupid he was acting now. The magician turned to our hero, explaining it to him. Our hero, addressing the magician, said that maybe it was the opposite, and the magician was very surprised. Then the young man said that if not the hero causes discord in the world, but discord in the world causes a hero, to which the magician asked if the young man could prove it and the young man said that he could not, but the chances that this is so are at least zero. The magician said that he liked the position of the doubting mind. But if the young man had no theory, then he had to keep silent and thought that it was time to finish it by attacking our hero and asking if the young man would already give up. Our hero understood that the magician began to attack him even at point-blank range. And Samijin said that the young man was not afraid at all and was not scared. There was not a drop of pain on his face. But even looking at him, the magician understood that he did not feel anything and asked our hero to die. Was it really impossible? So they fought and then the young man understood that if God intervened again, he would fight until it happened. The young man thought and tried to dodge the magician's attacks, seeing how the young man looked. The magician understood that the air changed the next moment our hero hit the magician right in the face, which he did not expect at all and the next attack our hero hit the magician several times, saying that it was already too late. Samijin did not understand at all what was happening, because the young man was moving quite differently from before. Did he not give his best? until that moment and then the magician did not understand what was happening. The young man applied the magician to the ground and he thought that the body was suddenly heavier. What was it? Was it really a weight spell? Wasn't it lost during the war in the age of the gods? Samijin thought, because he was the best magician in the kingdom, but could not cope with this magic. But why this is cordoning off? Maybe the young man has been casting a spell on himself all this time, exposing himself against him. At that moment, the magician shouted, the young man to disappear from there, because it was such disrespect. He would not forgive the young man for anything. And then our hero, seeing the power that the magician concentrates in this staff, understood that this staff really was. At this moment, Mana was escaping from the staff and our hero, seeing this, understood that the staff could not withstand, one gun could not accept such an amount of mana, was a heavenly crystal installed in this staff, our hero understood. To which the magician said that it was too late to realize everything. This staff is made from the bones of dead kings and Orichalcan. It is a masterpiece of the kingdom's technology, and the main element of the staff is an artificial celestial crystal. If used, it will cause huge damage to the area, and the magician was sure that he would lose his post as general of Euphonia. But this it didn't matter anymore, from the person who mocked him, he wouldn't even leave ashes, towering high above the young man. In the air, the magician shouted for the staff to show the absolute power of absolute death to the young man and asked to show ruthless destruction. Use the artifact of the mourner of the setting sun. Our hero understood that he could not evade this blow, running away from the destruction zone. The next moment, the magician landed on the ground and thought that the young man had the strength of a first-class wizard. But the young man played and to think he spent almost all his mana on some peasant. The magician thought to himself that he should have killed the colonel family long ago, because Samijin had heard that an experienced butler works for them. So he hoped to keep his magic in any case. He had to go to them, making his way through the avalanches. The magician thought, 
but then he saw a young man who was standing in front of him and did not understand how this was possible and why the guy was still alive. Our hero, looking at the magician in front of him bleeding, Holding his hand, realized that he almost died as soon as the magician released magic. The young man activated the whole hack that he had prepared, withstood the blow as long as possible while activating the grave, falling into the crack he created. The young man avoided a direct hit, but the shock wave itself it was powerful enough. If this technique had been launched when he was in full magical power, Alto would have definitely died. From where? Our hero. The magician asked him not to approach and hit the young man right on the head with a stone. Our hero trying to walk and keeping his balance understood that he could win, compared to the pain of losing Hannah. All the attacks of this magician were nothing. Approaching the magician our hero said that he was a weakling, but to to protect those who were dear to him, he would surpass fate and delete manga head on. The magician flew away and our hero looked at the fact that the magician was lying right in front of him already unconscious and pulling out his sword. The young man carried it right over the magician, thinking that it was necessary to kill him while he was alive, otherwise Hannah would be in danger again. He knocked out all the time. Because suddenly it worked he was sure that the same methods would not work next time, so he had to kill him, even right now but he was thinking that he could not. At that moment he was distracted by Lion and asked the master what was going on, jumping to him directly from the roof, saying that what had already happened at all and the young man saw that it was Lion. Lion went down to our hero and asked what had happened, but he twisted his leg and fell straight to the ground. At that moment the young man held the blade and put it in his bosom. Tying the magician Lion understood that something really terrible had happened, but said that everything was fine now. The evil Samijin was captured and killed by him, and twice by Master Lin, to which the young man said that it was not so, because he did not defeat him. Anyway, Hannah is just a talent of the germ of the hero. Some kind of nonsense lion mused aloud and said that it was impossible because of to take away this life. The young man said that Lion was right, but the young man could not finish him off, looking at his shaking hands, our hero said. Lion, approaching the young man, explained that it was natural to hesitate at the death of someone, because killing demons was completely different. Samijin caused so much damage and Lion was sure that the government would take care of it anyway. He was glad that the young man was unharmed. Addressing the master, seeing Lion in front of him, the young man smiled and then Lion helped our hero get up. Lion said that he was still in shock from the fact that the young man defeated one of the twelve generals of Euphonia, and said that the guy was definitely a master to which our hero took that it was not so. Alto explained that he was able to win only due to unforeseen circumstances for Samijin. The young man caught him by surprise and fought with a situation where he had an overwhelming advantage. His result, if the circumstances had been different, he would have received not such injuries. Our hero thought to himself that the most important reason for his victory was that his standard of living had increased, and one increase in the standard of living was enough to raise his status so much. Our hero thought if he had one level left he would have died for sure. Lion, looking at Alto, who was thinking, understood that the young man looked wrong and asked if Alto could move. The young man said that everything was fine. He just thought and asked if he and Magica were not supposed to be together, then Lion said that the girl was not, because she had to leave the hotel before him, and then Alto asked where the girl went. Lion said that no one knew it, it was Magica, and then Alto said that everything would be fine with her, but at that moment the young man pushed Lion away, who helped him walk, because something was passing between them. Alto thought to himself that he still hadn't recovered. Moreover, he saw that Citri was standing in front of him and the girl greeted them, saying that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. Then Lion, turning to the master, asked who it was, this girl, to which Citri did not understand at all why the young man did not remember her and reminded him that the one who helped get the reward for the dragon. She was Citri Justice, one of the twelve Euphonia generals, an official of the Council of True and False. How could the young man not remember if his brains were in place? Lion wondered what kind of spirals were in her hair and that the girl looked like a villain, to which she approached him saying that the young man had no sense of style if he did not see the beauty of this haircut, and he shouted at her saying that she means the only one who has at least some feeling. At this moment, walking away from Lion, the girl asked him what was wrong with him and said that she had had enough, because otherwise they would have had to wait in order to waste time swearing with a stupid commoner. She was here for this young man, pointing her finger at Alto. The girl said and hung on the young man the label is evil. Listening to this, our hero was surprised and then Lion, defending the young man, asked what kind of business it was, because it was not the young man who broke the city, but Samijin, the master did nothing wrong, reported Lion. 
to which the girl said that she was of course aware of the situation Samijin was removed from the post of general. Some measures were taken against him. But this was not her job, the girl said. Her mission would eliminate those whom God recognized as evil. In the name of the judicial council true and false, she condemned them for their sins and tried attack our hero with your sword. The young man has not recovered yet and sitting on the ground thought that there was an attack again at this moment someone was protecting him and holding a sword it was Lyon and asked if the job before the judicial authority was to kill innocent people and said that he would not allow a finger to touch the master, repelling the girl's attack. Citri, bouncing back, thought that Lyon blocked her attack with his sword and said that she thought the guy was just a muscular fool, but it looks like he was very skilled in his business, to which the young man asked how the girl was going to defeat him. Master Lyon, with such a thin sword and he would deal with her instead of his master. At this moment the young man behind Lyon asked him to be careful, because her weapon was special, asked the hero to trust him. Moving towards the girl, Lyon offered to attack her. I call her a curly-haired villain. Our hero tried to warn Lyon. At that moment the girl attacked Lyon and our hero understood that it was bad. Then Citri explained that Lyon could not defeat her and she wounded the guy, to which Lyon could not feel pain. He explained that he had maximum resistance to damage. It didn't even hurt him from this. At that moment he felt pain and blood gushed from his hand. Our hero just managed to knock his name. Clutching his hand, Lyon realized that it was very painful for him. Then our hero, getting up and shouting the name of Lyon, ran up to him and asked if Lyon was okay. He did not understand, because he thought that his resistance to pain had reached the limit. And then the hero, looking at Citri, understood that she was still a girl activated it. The young man said that this sword is their belief in absolute justice. It is an artifact that the girl owns, compared to Samijin and the other twelve generals. Her strength is much less than I would even say that Lyon had more strength. Then Lyon did not understand how the girl could hurt him, but the young man explained that for the same reason they could not win. This weapon sent a curse on the opponent if the opponent was stronger than the owner of the sword. Perhaps he understood that Mr. Lyon was stronger. The girl dared to attack him, activated the curse. The damage resistance of the cursed Lyon was nullified and he was deeply wounded. Then the young man did not understand why not neutralize her with one blow. It was the young man who said that the attack just touching her hair has the same effect if they do too much damage to her. They will lose their own lives. The stronger the hero was, the harder it was to win. It is thanks to this weapon that Citri Justice dominates 12 generals in Euphonia. Listening to this whole story, Lyon understood that it was unfair, how could they defeat the girl then? He asked our hero, then Citri, looking at the young man, understood that he knew quite a lot. Did she use this weapon on Alto? Addressing him the girl asked and where did the young man have so much information and she asked if he had fought with her in a previous life. To which our hero said that it was a stupid joke and if the girl was dragging her time to recover, then he would not let her. At that moment, an explosion occurred and everyone did not understand what was happening after seeing this explosion. Our hero understood that it was at the house of Cornello and then the young man asked if anyone else besides Samijin could attack them and our hero turned to Lyon and said that they had to hurry there. At that moment they saw light. The young man felt a power much greater than Samijin's, realizing that Hannah was in danger. They were being chased by Citri and said did he really already think that he could escape from her in such a state? And at that moment she was thinking what kind of noise it was. Was it their god fortune shining and the young man was not in a hurry because he was tormenting his conscience before the gods? Was she right because ours was running away? And she offered to end this to our hero by attacking him with her sword. The young man thought to ask that he had finally defeated Samijin and yet he really could not save Hannah. The young man thought. At that moment Rue was useful and our hero did not expect at all that he would resist Citri. Grabbing the slime the young man did not understand why Rue did it and thought that it was a joke. Because the stream was spreading in his hands. And our hero was trying to understand. And asked him to answer him and asked him not to die. Because so many memories bound them together. The next moment the young man only had one split ball. Citri was sitting in front of our hero and he was furious and said that she had killed Rue, so he took the sword and decided to attack her. The next moment he was back in the place from where he came. Then the one sitting on the throne said that it was such things, because he did not even pay attention to the curse of the artifact and greeted our hero, saying that they had not seen each other for a long time. It was the very thing that sent the young man for two lives. Something reported that he was not impressed that the young man lost control of himself in a fit of rage. Did he already know about the horror of that artifact? The young man understood that this was the place he got to when he died in a previous life. So he thought that he died again. A chair appeared behind him and something offered sit down to our hero, saying that he had the opportunity to talk to him again. 
The young man asked if he had died for what kind of creature reported that he had not died. His soul had just reached its limit. He could be born again and his body would be put down. The soul would remain the same as the last life. Something said in that the young man lives a much harsher life than last time. Being in shock the fact that the slime was killed. The soul of the young man was a millimeter away from death. The young man said that he had already died. Then he asked to return him back as soon as possible. Something said that before that he wanted to ask the young man one question. What he would do when he returned to that world. Our hero said that he would kill Citri as soon as he returned. He would kill her and avenge Rue. At that moment something was splitting under him and then the creature reported that it could not return back into that world. To which the young man did not understand why. Because the girl killed his most loyal partner. Then something asked what the purpose of the young man was when he got here earlier. He told him that when he left, what the young man asked him. The creature asked and then our hero remembered his smiling hand and the creature said that it looked like the young man remembered and said that their goals coincide with his they could not just stand and watch as his soul is destroyed before it can serve its purpose and offered the young man to calm down first. And now he will ask our hero again what he will do when he returns to this world. Our hero understood that he really wanted to avenge Rue, but if he allowed emotions to take control of him, he would lose even more important people. The young man started life anew in order to save Hannah. The young man answered the creature that was in front of him and then it said that it was exactly that. The young man put his soul in order to save the one who was dear to him, so they sent the hero for victory. He said without the possibility of replaying until his soul was out, so he said that he would resume their bet. The blade stopped right in front of Citri's face and she looked at the young man and asked him to wait, calling him a sinner. She thought that this sword is extremely effective against strong opponents, but on the other hand there is an attack that highlights a weak opponent, and the owner will be cursed, which is a backlash. She also thought that Citri should have received there was a lot of damage when she got into the rue, and the young man said that he no longer had time to mess with her. Hearing this the girl was surprised. Turning to Lion, our hero asked him to evacuate with Rue to a safe place and so Lion asked if the young man was going to go there alone and that he would go with him. Then our hero turned to Lion and asked him that he did not want Rue to suffer even more after Alto saves Hannah they are together to return. And until then, the young man had to take care of him and protect Rue, Lion said. But in return, the young man had to protect Hannah and also asked him to return alive. Our hero smiled and said that he would do exactly that. Then Lion, saying goodbye to our hero, turned to Citra and said that she should have run to what Citra did not understand what the young man was saying at all. Lion, addressing her, said that she was one of the twelve generals and still did not understand it. Perhaps this kingdom had come to an end, Lion said. At that moment other beings were descending from the sky. Magica was running with all her might at that moment and understood that Alto was fighting with someone. She even felt strong magical energy from here and was probably fighting with Samijin and thought that it was necessary to help him. But at that moment there was an alarming presence over the Kernel house, maybe it was the work of the god Fortimus, she thought. But only today the gift of the germ of God appeared in Hannah's life, she understood that God was starting to move even before the germ of the hero grew. But it was not so necessary to evacuate Hannah away. At that moment she saw that something descended from the sky and blew up the house and understood that it was shadows, after all God and that Hannah was in danger. Entering the house, Magica saw how the shadows of God killed everyone who lived in it and understood that Hannah's parents and the butler were already dead. But she said that she would not let them touch the embryo of God, so the girl fought with the shadows and Magica tried to resist them. At that moment she heard Hannah's scream from the top floor. Magica understood that there were many more shadows in front of her and she was telling them to get out of the way breaking them. She was rushing straight to Hannah. At that moment the shadow of God was standing in front of her and throwing the sword to Hannah. The girl was telling her to hold on. Her sword fell right into the shadow of God and taking the sword out of the shadow of God Hagna greeted the girl, saying that her dad and mom and all the employees were dead. Magica, hugging Hannah, changed that she came late. At that moment she said that everything would be fine. Hannah was crying. But Magica said that from now on she would not let these shadows touch the girl with a finger, standing up for her. Our hero also ran into the house and realized that absolutely everything was the same as then and really defeating Samijin he would not be able to change fate. If so, then Hannah was probably already dead our hero thought. At that moment someone called him. It was Magica, and Hannah was standing behind her. The young man was glad that the girl saved Hannah. Addressing the girls, the young man asked if they were hurt to which Magica said that the conversations were later and asked to listen carefully. What appeared in the sky were the shadows of God and says that now something bigger stronger will appear. There is almost no time left. At that moment our hero saw that something it descended from the sky. 
thinking that it was a demon, but then realized that it was not so and could not believe his eyes and what he saw in front of him. The same feeling when he fought with demons in Kinetogris. He felt even greater strength. If it is a demon that arises naturally, then this is the entity that God created purposefully. It was a good demon and our hero used to undo the hacking. Hacking that he established during the battle with Samijin. The young man understood that this would stop part of the magic, thanks to the new resistance to the difference. He could do something, and said that Hannah just stood. Since the young man could fight by taking the blade out of his scabbard, the young man said. At that moment the demon was close and attacking our hero, the young man understood that she was fast. Fighting with the demon, the young man used a blade. But under the onslaught of the weapon, the blade broke and the dagger from the dragon's fang was even harder than nitrile. How could he break? The young man thought, dodging the girl's attacks. At that moment Magicka came to his aid. Beating off the demon and the young man thanked Magicka. Then the girl said that he was on the alert, because she couldn't even keep track of everything. The presence of an artifact means that the girl belongs to a heavy kind of warriors, but she has the same dexterity as Magicka of one of the squirrel tribe. It was a creation born of God and then our hero, realizing everything, understood that they seemed to need to split up and said that Magicka was in the vanguard, and he would be in Magicka told the rearguard that she understood everything and went on the attack. Firstly, Magica, who will be able to compete with this girl in speed, will take her target and then the girls fought. And the young man thought that he would take advantage of this opportunity and use the microflash to attack the demon. At that moment, Magica understood everything and went on the attack. The young man thought, saying that he was directing the lights and they were next to Magica's movements while she was dodging them or from attacks. The young man strikes another blow of the blind zone, attacking the demon right in the back and he understood that he was hit, damage it was small but certainly effective. But at that moment the girl's wings shone brighter, and our hero did not understand what it was. The next moment she attacked him with feathers from these wings and the young man realized that there were a lot of them and it was impossible to dodge. The wings cut him from all sides, then he decided to use hacking. At that moment he realized that the force did not come out, and the feather wounded him right in the chest and our hero flew away, right into the Colonel house, to which Magica screamed and called Alto. But the young man lay on the ground without responding. The feather was right in his heart. 